Hey, everybody, we're live coming to you from the United States, the New York area. This is your host, Jim Masters, and welcome to the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series, where we bring in lots of celebrity friends and guests and have amazing, deep, inspiring, fun, who knows what can happen types of conversations with all of them, talking about what they're up to, reconnecting with friends of mine that I've known for years in television, radio station, film, who stop by our show, and lots of new special guests as well. We're always welcoming all kinds of new folks, but uh, our special guests, well, we're already old buddies. We were both at the Tony Orlando concert. Dear friend, Tony Orlando, of course, was a guest on our show, the music icon, the legend, one of the sweetest guys on earth. And that was at Mohegan Sun Arena, 10,000 people. It was incredible. It was a fabulous finale concert for Tony. He was a guest again on our show multiple times, and we love him. And our very special guest, who hails originally from Australia. He lives here in the States. He's in Atlanta, Georgia. He's been in California. He's been all over the place. Our very special guest is a very talented individual who actually got to go on stage with Tony, which really surprised our guest, Kai Baldwin. And yeah, we're very excited to have him here on the show. Uh, whether this is the first time you're hearing about Kai or you are a big super fan, we welcome you to the Gym Masters Show Live Series. Now, if you want to interact with us when the show is on, we are on live right now around the world. And if you miss anything or you're coming late, you know, for those who are watching this in the archives, you've come in late, don't worry about it. The entire thing is archived and saved on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Give us a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, check out some of the other incredible episodes that we have. Oh boy, like 1,100 of them and counting. It's amazing. But uh, Kai and I were both there and we had a nice chat too, uh, sort of backstage in the VIP area when Tony was talking, everybody was celebrating Tony. We got a chance to hang with Tony as well, which is really nice. And then Kai and I met his mom as well. And Kai and I had some great conversations and there we are, two spiffy looking guys here. Uh, this was backstage at Mohegan Sun at uh, Tony Orlando's finale concert. And we really caught up with each other and we talked about his career, about Kai's, and we talked about this show and all of my work in television, radio, stage, and film here in the States. And then we put it together, Kai and I, to uh, have him stop by our show. And I'm so excited about that. And he is too. And he is positioned by his instruments, which is really cool because he has folks that are, you know, friends that are staying in Atlanta at his place. And they've all had to like move to other rooms behind doors. I think the cat had to be kicked out. There's people downstairs. There's people in this room. And they're all being quiet so they can watch my conversation with Kai. <laughs> we thank all of the friends and family that are there in Atlanta at uh, Kai's place. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we do what we can to bring you the great entertainment. Hey, let me tell you a little about our very, very special guest, if this is the first time, or to remind uh, super fans of our show, the Gym Master Show series, and of our special guest, Kai Baldwin. Uh, of course, some great photos and all kinds of cool stuff and some surprises we've got in store for you, too. You never know what will happen when we're live on the air on the Gym Master Show live series. Kai, of course, uh, well, he's been doing this for a long time, ever since he was a kid. And uh, he's had an opportunity to be on some great stages, perform with some fabulous people as a singer, songwriter, dancer, actor, producer, and everything else in between. He's got such energy. He's got such passion. And what I love is that he shares that with the world. And I'm very, very similar. So he and I connected right away because when you have your passion and you love what you do, Look, there he is right there. It all the way goes back to childhood. And we'll talk about that. You know, some of the cool things that inspired Mickey Mouse and uh, the Mickey Mouse Club and the whole connection with Disney, which is really exciting as well. And look at that, huh? That's cool. That brings back memories for fans as well. But for those of you who didn't know, he also competed on Australia's Got talent. Now, of course, here in the States, we have America's Got Talent, Britain's Got Britain's Got Talent. We've had guests from all of those shows, and he competed in that as well, which is incredible. Right on stage, doing his thing, 
showing people how he can dance like no other, almost like a mini Sammy Davis Jr. or Gene Kelly. There he is there. He's been on a lot of the different competition shows, you know, the voice kids as well, that version. But um, he's been doing this again for a long time as a multi-instrumentalist, singer, songwriter, everything, dancer, producer. And speaking of performer and producer, just sprinkling in some information for the folks who you know are learning about our buddy Kai for the first time. He also does these really fun, incredible, and engaging videos on social media and YouTube and everywhere else. And he takes, you know, he sets up all the lights, he's got the instrumentation and he's got the microphone and he dances and he sings and he does it to a lot of your favorite songs as well. And it's incredible. It's got a fantastic voice. A matter of fact, uh, one of the things that actually happened was uh, it caught the folks, you know, with Tony Orlando's organization, because he did a version, uh, you know, he does everybody. There's John Legend, all of me. He did a version of Tie a Yellow, uh, Yellow Ribbon Around the Yellow Oak Tree, Tony's like classic song. And uh, Tony and team got wind of that. And then he ended up at Mohegan Sun on stage, which is absolutely amazing. He's got all of his own music that he's put out over the years as well. We'll talk about that and how you can get the music. Lots of great, fantastic songs. A lot of them with special meaning to and purpose, which I think is really, really cool. Again, he loves what he does and he's been doing it for a while. And as a producer, he actually gets himself, you know, behind the camera. Look at this cool shot too. This goes back a ways, huh? We'll just sprinkle a few of these in here, but uh, we'll talk more about all of them. And our friend Kai Baldwin joining us again uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, USA, Again, we're here in the New York area. So awesome to have you here, gang. I know lots there to uh, tell you about, just sprinkling in just some of the background of our very special guests. And it's my pleasure to welcome him here to the show. Again, we're going to pick up where we left off when we were chatting backstage. And we'll uh, share some great secrets and other cool things that he's working on. He's going to be heading to France. He just wrapped up a, a day of full training. We're going to tell you what he's training for. It's going to be heading to France soon, which is going to be very, very cool. But without further ado, let's welcome him. Red carpet intro that was, huh? Kai Baldwin joining us right here for the first time and not the last on the Jim Master Show Live. Hi. Hello, Jim. Hi. Good to see you. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm doing really well, especially with that uh, that little trip down memory lane right there. Wow, thank you so much for that. That, w that was an Oscar-winning uh, intro, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. You did your homework. I saw Carmina in the chat says uh, you did your homework. You certainly did. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's really amazing. When you and I chatted backstage, It was there was so much going on and there was so much happening. But uh, we had such a great conversation, too, and your mom was there and, you know, such a a wonderful family that you have. How, for the folks that are watching for the first time, my friend, how did you first get started in all of this? Because, you know, in the years that you've been on this planet Earth, you've done a lot already and you've got so much else going. I mean, I even said internet sensation because whenever you do your videos, you sort of break the internet, things go through the <laughs> roof, which and we welcome everybody watching around the world. It's really cool to have you here. Uh, how'd you get started? What was the inspiration for you early on? You are you are too kind. Thank you so much. Well, how far back do we go? Um, <laughs> I the very very beginning, I was not into performing at all. I was really into sport. I was really into soccer. I was really into rugby. Right, that's what I played growing up. And one of my friends in the, in the rugby team when I was like seven years old was going to a tap dancing class. And, um, and, and asked if I wanted to join. Now, when I say I wanted to join, I think his mom asked if my, asked my mom if I wanted to join. Uh, anyway, I said, yes, sure thing. And, um, I went and the next week he dropped out because he hated it, but I just absolutely adored it. It was fast. It was loud. It was energetic. It was, um, it was exhilarating. Right. And so I just fell in love with tap and, and then from there, I just kind of fell into this whole industry. I was dancing for a, year, a few years, as you mentioned, Australia's Got Talent when I was 10 as a tap dancer. And then after that, I just 
that experience on stage, uh, I said to my mum, I said, I, I, there it is, there it is right there with the bowl cut. Oh my goodness, we can talk <laughs> about the bowl cut. I was doing a, an acting job that was set in like, you know, the 20s or 30s or something. And so they'd given me a bowl cut. And then I went the next weekend and did uh, Australia's Got Talent. That's beside the point. I remember saying to my mum, I said, I love performing and I want to do this more. How can I do it more? And and mum recommended that I um I do something a little less niche than tap dancing, right? And so right. to get more opportunities to be on stage. And so she suggested if I wanted to try singing, and I did. And she said, I'm sorry because like none of our family is musical. So she was under the impression that that meant that I was going to be a, a a terrible singer. And I said, let's give it a shot anyway. We found we found a. Uh, uh, a fantastic vocal coach um and and i've just been doing it ever since that's so cool you know what's really great too you were born in sydney australia of course that beautiful city you mentioned the sport you mentioned playing sports uh, mm. as a youth At the age of six again you started tap dancing with dane perry's tap pups right tell yes, us about that exactly exactly well so tap dancing i think in a, a lot of people's perceptions of it is very you know very ooh -hoo -hoo and very very light and um the the tap dogs and the tap pups is the complete opposite and for a seven-year-old kid you know six seven-year-old kid that was um just the best the tap dogs are a very famous tap troupe a, a group of guys that they've been on broadway they've toured the world with their tap show and they wear tap boots right just to give you a kind of a sense of the type of tap that it is uh, and and so dean perry um who's the creator of the tap dogs he started the tap pups which is a tap school for um his son and his friends right and it eventually grew into into the tap school that it is now and um and yeah, I, I just went and as I said, it was just, it was, ex it was everything that I, that I loved and, and still love as a, as a kid, just as a, loud and exciting and, and, uh, just a group of boys all just like, just stamping on the ground. Right. And then, and then you realize that there's a lot, a lot of technique in it. And, and I just, I absolutely adored it. And you then took that and you sort of took the reins and ran with it because you learned other genres, hip hop and jazz and more, right? Exactly, exactly. They offered some other uh, styles of dance at the tap pups, but of course tap was the, the main one. But I remember doing hip hop classes there and I, I think I think some ballet if I can remember. But then I started going to other dance schools and, and really I've done, I've done most of it. I've done most of it um, from contemporary and lyrical. I'm not that great at that. I'm not very flexible. Uh, but yeah, I did lots of ballet. Tap was always my favorite, but hip hop and jazz and jazz funk and acro, acrobatics and all kinds of different stuff. Musical theater specific dancing, all of it. That's so cool. Age of seven, you were cast in Trouble, uh, as Trouble in Madame Butterfly, performing at the Sydney Opera House at seven years old. What a great honor and privilege that was, huh? Wow, yeah. Like I, I don't remember much to be honest, uh, <laughs> because because it was so long ago. But yeah. uh, I do remember that. So I look very young for my age, right? I'm 22, and that has been the case my whole life. And so when I was seven, I looked like I was, you know, four, four or five. And so that's exactly what they wanted. They wanted a super young child, but I had the advantage of being older and being a bit more mature and being able to follow directions better than the actual four or five year olds, you know? And so, um, there wasn't any kind of, uh, singing or, or, you know, or, or anything, but just being able to be a part of that, uh, was really amazing. And also like performing at the opera house, come on, as an Australian, uh, the opera house is iconic. So being able to go backstage and, and see the, the back halls of the opera house was, uh, was very cool. And I, and I've since done another show there. Uh, and so the memories of the opera house are, are always really, really great. Yeah, you were on Andrew Lloyd Webber's Love Never Dies and also Dylan Thomas's Under Milk Word of the Sun. That's the one. That's the other one at the Opera House. Yeah. Under Milk Word, right? And yes. then you played Michael Banks in Disney's Mary Poppins in Auckland, New Zealand. That's true. That's true. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool, these great opportunities. And then it was, like you said, nine years old. Here comes Australia's Got Talent with your own tap dancing routine. And you became that year's youngest semi finalist. Uh, which is amazing to even have that opportunity and that honor, right? Right, right. And and as I mentioned earlier, it really was the catalyst. Uh, if we look back at the big moments of my life, at least so far, um, that was one of them because it was just kind of the time that I realized that being on stage and performing, that that's that's it for me. That's what I want to do. And, um, and yeah, to be a part of, to be able to just get up there and, and, and just experience 
that kind of energy was something that I'd never had before and was really, really just, it just incredible. And I would imagine everybody at home and their friends and, and what was it like, you know, who you are on that major competition show and then you had to go back to school like the next day or whatever and the kids in class and everything. What was that like? Were they, you like the hero of the school or something? <laughs> no, no, not at all, actually. It was very, very just get back to it and, and the way it should be, of course. Um, going on something like that doesn't actually, you know, that doesn't change anything. But I actually remember my my school was doing their own production of got talent right and they had 5g's got talent and i remember i wasn't allowed to be in it because they said kai you you're already on the real thing so you're not allowed you're disqualified i said i was i was really annoyed at that i wanted to tap dance at school but uh but yeah no that's so funny huh because you already you know sort of exceeded that <laughs> no, yeah. on, on national television which is amazing <laughs> You were also featured, you know, in, in several different things in Australia, our friends down under, the series Spirited, East West 101, Underbelly, Razor. And you also uh, provided the voice for Little Nut Brown Hair in the animated series, Guess How Much I Love You, seasons one and two. What was that like doing sort of the, the voice of that character? Voice over work was was really fantastic um i feel like i feel like i'm gonna say that about most things i just i'm very i'm very enthusiastic about most things but um yeah i was cast as little nut brown hair in this in the in the animated uh series based on the the very famous uh child book children's book and um really yeah i, I loved it i loved it uh, i've got very fond memories going into the studio and and doing all my lines and and they'd say oh can you do i i always remember that they'd say it's dance dance because they had very specific things with the accent right they want they want it to be i think it's slightly more british than than my australian accent and so um, they'd always say, remember it's dance, but, uh, no, it was, it was really lovely. Um, yeah, seasons one and two, I remember they brought me back, uh, quite a few years later and my voice had started, was just starting to change. And so trying to get back up here, you know, was, uh, was, I had to put in a bit more effort and I had my Manuka honey and everything, but, um, but what a lovely experience. And my sister got, was, I uh, was able to do one episode as little spotty deer as well. Wow. And so being able to do, do it with her, it was a, it was a lovely experience. Isn't that great when you have that happen, when you can sort of come together like that and experience, you'll, you guys will always look back at that opportunity. Exactly, exactly. So. We, we both auditioned for, I think, some roles and I think they really liked her voice, but it was so similar to mine that yeah. we're like, we can't have two characters being so similar. So uh, I was cast, but then they, they brought her back later on just for, for one episode, which was great. And my friend, speaking of that, look what we dug up here. Oh, I said, did my research. No. Ah! <laughs> Oh, isn't she adorable? Oh my goodness. What a photo. Both of you. Terrific. You look like the Gerber babies, you know, the Gerber baby food. You look like right. the Gerber babies <laughs> or that an ivory hilarious. snow commercial. Uh, that is really a great shot, huh? Yeah. Right, oh man. You did your research. We you did, did our research. research. I had my thinking cap on. Absolutely. <laughs> That's so cool. That's again, the, you know, the love of family and the support of family. There's really nothing like it. You also, people may remember, you know, super fans following 2014, you were a semi-finalist in the inaugural season of the voice kids yes. as part of team Delta. How cool was that? Oh, just once again, like being on, as I, as I mentioned, right, I think I've made that clear. I like being on stage, right? And so when Voice Kids, when the Voice Kids came around and I, I'm not one for, you know, the exposure and what it does for your career and, and right. the numbers and you're going to get famous. Ah, I don't really care about all of that, but um, I wanted to Which play a with a live band. Too. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, thank you. But, um, but yeah, I just wanted to play with a live band. And so, uh, and I wanted to get on stage again and I wanted to do that as much as possible. And so the voice kids was, was, um, a real, real, of course, a great opportunity to do that. And it was a lovely experience. If you know, if you know, going into those types of shows, you know, what it is and, and to not get too wrapped up in the, in it, in, in the, in the craziness of it. Um, and I, I just did that. I went in, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to have the best time I can. I'm going to get to perform with these professionals as a, as a, you know, 12 year old, you don't, how often do you get that opportunity? And so I just, I went in there and I had a blast and it was great. 
So, you know, that's kind of cool. Like you said, that's a rare thing to say that, you know, the numbers and all those other things. Well, that's part of the whole thing, but that's not why you do what you do. It's and I'm the same way in my career in television and radio and stage and film. Mm. It, it's that's part of it, but that's not what drives me. What drives me is the love of the work, the love of the connection with people, sharing whatever my talents are and lifting people up, inspiring them, making them feel good and all of that, like you do through everything that you're involved in, Kai. Oh, and that's you. what really drives you to do it, right? It's the it's the passion to share your, your love of life and your enthusiasm for life and the talents and the you know, God-given gifts that you've been given with everybody else and all these other things come as a result. That's the icing on the cake. That's the gravy, but it's not what's in your heart driving you. Right. Right. And, and to be honest, from, from what I've heard and uh, I, I've not dealt with this in the past, but from what I've heard, all of those things that people are usually going for the, the fame and the, the, all of that, that a lot of times can be the negative parts of the job for some people, at least from what I've heard. So like for myself, I just, yeah, I, I I love this. I just love it so much, and I want to do it as much as I can. And um, what really what really found out, and we can get into it. Um, I'm assuming, knowing you, you've probably got some screenshots pulled up. But um, when I released my song, Dear Mum, which was really just a passion project, and, and kind of it's a song about a very serious topic, which is bullying and youth suicide. Um, and that that was able to really help a lot of people in a way that I was not was not expecting for somebody of my, of my size, you know, of my, uh, at the time and, and still, um, and realizing just how, just how influential and, and moving stories can be. Right. And so that came, became a, a bit of a new goal for us is to really try and tell stories that matter and, and help as many people as we can along the way. So of course, to do that, you need to be growing your social media and getting out there and blah, 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 because, but in the end, it's all for the, for the service of trying to help as many people as we can. Well, another one that you did is this one too, and sort of Depression tackling awesome, yes. uh, mental health, which is such a big, you know, part of uh, what everybody's talking about today, understanding it. Depression is a monster. That's a, that was a beautiful project. Tell us about that. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. So like, well, so I've been making my own music and music videos for, Oh, nearly 10 years now, I think it started with, you know, with covers and, and when I had my own original music, I would make them myself. And, and as I said, with Dear Mom, which was just a passion project, I was like, we had response from all around the world, millions of views and people saying that it had saved their life. Schools were using it in their curriculums. And, um, and that was really a turning point where I was like, let's try and, let's try and uh, let's try and put some effort into these into these these topics that are that are really important and, and sometimes can feel a bit taboo to talk about and so um, depression is a monster was that it was just kind of like we're always limited by budget we're always limited by time depression is a monster let's put everything we can into this project to to tell a story that matters and, and just and see what happens and I got to be real that is one of if not the most the the project that I'm most proud about um, being able to direct that and and I edited it and we we got some incredible talent talent with the with the crew and the, and the cast and being able to put that together having something in your head and then coming it out and having it come out in the real world was just so 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 um it was just everything I wanted it to be and, and I'm really proud of that and and yeah we've been able to to help some people with it which is really the goal it was really amazing I would imagine too you know when you um when you do something like that and then you hear back from people that are influenced by it, touched by it, and perhaps maybe their lives are, are healing as a result of something like that. They see somebody like you that they admire and then you decide, I want to do something that not only uh, takes the admiration, but inspiration and pulls those things together for the good of somebody else. Imagine when you hear from people who tell you that it really mattered to them. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? It's, it's everything, right? Like, like I'm a, I am, I'm a little selfish in the sense that I'm doing this because I just, I love it more than, more than anything else. But, um, but that is really, that is really like it just it's everything i i remember there was one story with with dear mom i received an email and it was just from a from a father 
And he was saying, I, I, I need to thank you because of your video. I still have a son. Um, and he went on to tell a story about how his, his 10 year old son came into the parents bedroom with, um, with, with the, with the, the family's handgun and he was crying, 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 crocodile tears. He couldn't talk. And they were like, what was going on? And he eventually showed them, uh, dear mom. And, uh, and, and he, he said to them that he said that he was looking for a reason not to take his own life that night. And mm. he found it with dear mum, And mm. like, whoa, right? Yeah, right, Jim? Like I'm still getting chills from that. Yeah. And this was, this yeah. was years ago. And so seeing things like that, getting comments from people who said, like, I realized from watching this that I was the bully and I'm going to, I'm going to step up and make sure that I do the right thing. I'm going to apologize. Like, like I'm just here vibrating my vocal cords, right? Like I'm not doing anything crazy, but um, but the fact that it can have that kind of impact is is really really incredible. It's something very special, and again, when you have the opportunity to have, you know, the platform and to have the uh, way to reach people through music, because I say the two big things that uh, is very healing: music and comedy. If you can mm. laugh and, and have comedy, it sort of breaks the ice and it sort of makes things a little bit easier. And music is the great universal language too and, and heals right. and brings people together, which is a, a great thing. So you're using your music for ways that go beyond just entertaining people, which I think is really special. Well, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, I think there's such a, um, I think there's such a, a void in, in that, in that area, which is this, as you said, like it is so powerful. It is so moving storytelling, right? Whether that's, whether that is, yeah, is comedy or or music or TV film, um, stage, all of that, anything creative like that is, is, can be so, so influential. And, and I feel like a lot of people are, um, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know, not, 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 I say the word utilizing, it makes it sound like I'm crafting this. That's not what I'm saying, but um, using it as a, as a resource, right, to try and to try and help people. Right. Um, of course, a lot of people do, but uh, I, uh, I'm very excited to hopefully be one of those voices for a long time to come. Where do you think you get all the energy come? What is that energy? <laughs> what is your energy source? I don't know, man. I, <laughs> I, I, I remember um, my, I think it was my kindergarten teacher used to call me Mr. Enthusiasm or the, or the uh, and that was just, it's just always been me. But, um, but I think, I think a big thing of course, is that I, I get to wake up every day and do something that I'm passionate about that I really enjoy doing. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I just, I love, I love, love, love learning and, and, and experiencing new things. And I'm, I'm sure everybody does. And, and so being able to come out today and, and be with my family, we're all healthy. I'm over here in America pursuing a dream that I love. Like, um, you can get caught up in the weeds of it or you can, or you can step back and, 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 and be very grateful for, for where you are, you know, and, and, and that's what I try and do as much as I can. And, and it's just, uh, I don't know, life is exciting, right? Life can, life can be, yes. life is everything that I always say that it it's, it's the best and it's the worst. And, um, and right. it's, it's, you, you just got to try your best to, to make it the best as much as you can. It's what you do with it. Exactly. Right. My friend. Exactly. Hey, we had a solar eclipse today. So it's right. like, you know, and people around the world were watching it and, uh, it, you know, it came through here too. And things got mm-hmm. a little dim. It was kind of cool to see the shadowing of everything, but people were crying. News anchors were on air crying because it was such a unifying thing, right. realizing that we're just these tiny little, you know, specks in this, this infinite universe. And when you yeah. realize that it's, hopefully brings people together and makes us want to uh, celebrate life, which is so short and precious, right? Yeah, a little bit of existentialism to get everybody uh, feeling good. Right. <laughs> right, absolutely. You've also had, uh, which I think is very, very cool too, involvement uh, with Disney, which mm. I think is really, really kind of cool. Big, big, big Disney. Um, one of the things too that I think some people probably remember, you collaborated with DreamWorks TV and Disney Channel, and you had been chosen as the Disney Diary vlogger working with DreamWorks for their Songs That Stick series. How cool is that? You really did your research. Wow. Wow. wow, wow. No, it was, um, 
Yeah, no, that was lovely. I collaborated with with DreamWorks on on quite a few occasions to um to be able to yeah just make some make some videos for them. I remember it was always quite funny because um. I was over in Australia just doing my thing and, and the DreamWorks uh, people a lot of times would make videos for these 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 young artists or make them with them. Um, and so when you'd look in the credits of the of the YouTube video, it was always directed by this person, filmed by this person, edited by this person. Uh, but me being over in Australia, I always, I would send over the video and you'd look at the credits and it would say, performed by Kai Baldwin, filmed by Sally Baldwin, that's my mom, edited by Kai Baldwin and... Uh, a lot of times recorded by Kai Baldwin, but it, it was it was always really funny to 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 see that. But um, I'm really really grateful for that that being able to to make all of that stuff and uh, be be in the back end as well as the front end. I think it's a really great education. But um, but yeah yeah, uh, it was it was great. I just I love making stuff, you know. And so getting the opportunity to do it more, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be stoked. That's so cool. Yeah, to have that connection too, because you know once they see somebody that they think is talented you're you're sort of on your way which i think is amazing look at this cool shot too oh wow yeah that was um that was completely separate and i, I and and kind of worked out that way but um but yeah this is the the carols in the domain <laughs> which the carols in the domain which is the uh, uh I, I if i'm not mistaken the biggest carols in the southern hemisphere and i yeah. think that year there was about a hundred thousand people live at the wow. uh, in sydney watching um, and definitely the biggest crowd I've I've performed to, but um, yeah, I I, I was there as my as myself, not as, uh, not affiliated with Disney at all. Um, and then they just uh, they happened to be doing. Uh, I think the song that they they gave for me was "When You Wish Upon a Star," at least the year prior. And so um, I got to be on stage with Mickey at the time, and he was conducting and. Um, that was once again it was a while ago so i'm calling back the memory but being on stage and seeing uh, all the lights and everything was um oh i it was it was unexplainable it was really really incredible it's like one of those uh pinch me moments huh look at this shot of course wow. ah! <laughs> I couldn't even. I can't even tell you what that's for. Maybe my mom is downstairs being like, "Kai, that was for that performance of that." Oh, thing. I'm sure she's but, probably um, like saying, "But this I can, was then, and this was that, and yeah." Yeah, but I can certainly remember all my friends. Wow, there it it's it's so it lovely takes. to to look back. We're so young. Wow. Wow, and look at this shot too. Club Mickey Mouse, fantastic! What a what a what a talented bunch of people I was lucky enough to be to work with. They're all incredible. And once again, like looking back, oh. It, so so young looking. I don't know, but um, <laughs> this is 2017, if I'm not mistaken. So um, yeah, it's it's been really great to uh, be able to watch all of them grow into the, grow into themselves as well. It's been great. Club Mickey Mouse too. That's a great thing to have been a part of. You know, a lot of people have their careers were launched being a part of anything to do with Mickey Mouse Club or Mouseketeers or you know, uh, was it Justin Timberlake? I mean, all of right. them were in these groups, and I think it's kind of cool, right? When you look back, you're like, oh yeah, that's right, I was in that. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, it was it was certainly a uh, a legendary cast to be able to you know at least kind of be in tandem with and, and and join for a little bit though of course their shows were were much bigger and much more successful than uh than the than the most recent one but um but yeah no certainly christina aguilera britney spears ryan gosling justin timberlake yeah uh, it was it was very cool to be able to um be in the same sentences as them sometimes you know it was really cool yeah you know there's something else that was really monumental in your career coming up you were cast, now this is something, a real honor. You were cast as the young Peter Allen in the two-part TV biopic, Peter Allen, Not the Boy Next Door, which was amazing. How did this come about? Wow. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> well, if we're talking about like important experiences in yeah. my life, Peter Allen is is up there, it, 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 certainly. Um how did it come about? Well, I auditioned. I auditioned. Uh, I've been I've been an actor for uh, as long as long as I can, you know, remember. Certainly as long as I've been singing. It. And so when the auditions come about, you just you do your best and you hope for the best. And uh, and that one, I remember them telling me later that um, I hadn't even. I hadn't even said the first line yet, and they said that's our guy. Just apparently, my my energy was uh, was and my enthusiasm was quite similar to to Peter, and so um, I just I just 
all I can say is I was just I was so so lucky um, to be able to one be the right person at the right time right they could have made that that biopic at any time but they made it when I was the right age um, I was a, a young boy who sung and, and tap danced and played the piano and acted and so it just worked out perfectly but to be able to be a part of that production with some of Australia's most you know legendary actors but also some of the most impressively talented and and experienced um crew the uh sean seat the director like being able to watch them work like holy crap jim it was it was just it was just the best and so um and then not only from that i was be i was able to be a part of something that was such good quality that it was able to do a lot for my journey in the sense of uh, i'm sure you may be about to say but i ended up winning some awards from that and and from that was able to directly be able to get the visa to come over here to america and so like if we're to, as i said if we're talking about big moments in my in my life that's um that's a really really pivotal one and what was it like getting that visa and then coming here to america that is pivotal and that's something very very special it's 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 notoriously difficult to get uh yeah a work visa here for america and when i'm still dealing with that my my uh my visa is a, is a expiring in a couple months and I've, uh, I've sent in my 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 application for my next one so we're crossing our fingers but you should uh, be good now once you appear on the gym masters show ah, live yes, everything else takes care of itself <laughs> i see i see i'll make sure to let the uh let the attorney know the government know, right? in, the, the immigration attorney um but yeah, no, like, how was it to move here? It was, it was like an adventure and it still is. It is every day, but is, yeah. being able to come over here with my family, um, and, and just kind of, I always said like, yeah, I, I, I really, really love being the small fish in the big pond, right. As opposed to being the big fish in the small pond, not saying that I was, but, um, I wanted to get over here as soon as I decided that this is what I wanted to do. America was always the destination. And so being able to take that step, oh, it's, it's, it's magical. And I still, I still am very excited. And especially, uh, I've, I've lived in LA for about seven years and I'm currently in Atlanta, but going back to LA, I was just there recently and you're driving down and you see the Hollywood sign and we'd see it every day and yet still you're pinching yourself. You know, it was, yeah. it was amazing. It really is. Absolutely. What brought you to Atlanta? What was, uh, in Atlanta opportunities for you? Well, really, LA was just too expensive for us. So, uh, we, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, like I, uh, our American journey has been amazing, amazing. But um, uh, it's also been, you know, it's been very, very difficult. And being the only person in my family allowed to work in the country, um, supporting a family of, of, of three or four, four sometimes, but now three, um, you know, in terms financially, it's been very, very difficult. And so, uh, yeah, we had to move away from LA. There was hot, there was all visa stuff with my sister going on. And so, um, we had to move somewhere and actually we were, uh, the reason we chose Atlanta is because of world chase tag. Now I know we haven't spoken about it at all. So anybody that just watches the gym masters show is maybe a little confused, but, um, my sister and I both uh, play professionally a sport called World Chase Tag. Um, we have the World Championships coming up in France later this month. But um, but yeah, there's a there's a, a training facility here in Atlanta uh, called the Knicks Training Center. It's got the quad, which is what we play on. And there's only a few quads in the country. And so um, being here and being able to train that was, uh, was fantastic. That is really cool. And I mentioned that you just got in from training. We sort of worked this... Uh, episode especially since we're doing the show live our series mm. live work it around your your training um, yes and, and that's what is that like how that's a whole other side of you that people might not even know about it's very right. intensive you know the fact that you're even sitting there upright right now i'm surprised <laughs> you're even pulling it off <laughs> Oh, chase tag. Don't get me started on chase tag. I could talk forever. Um, it's a, it's a relatively new sport. It's only six, seven, eight years old. Um, but it is what it sounds like. It is professional tag with parkour. And so there's a, there's an arena and there's uh, somebody trying to stay away and there's a chaser and uh, chaser and evader, and you have to stay away from them for 20 seconds to get points. And, um, it is, what an incredible sport it is exhilarating uh to watch and to play but there's a there's a lot of strategy involved and it really feels like chess but you know with 
metal and wood and diving and hitting your head sometimes. But um, but uh, yeah, it really, really is such a strategic game, and I have just adored being a part of that uh, kind of the very – because this sport is so new, imagine being part of chess when it was six years old, right? That would be crazy, and you get to you get to really innovate and, and create new strategy and get to name it, which is really fun. Uh, but, no, just being able to, of course, stay active and, um, and uh, like – Athletics and and sport has always been a, a big, big, big part of my life, and so being able to be a part of that has been really, really, really a joy. That's so cool, and it's a great way to keep yourself fit, right? What are some things that you do? Yeah. What's some of your routine for fitness? Because you're a, a dancer as much as you are a singer and performer. Um, tell us about some of the things that you do to keep yourself fit, but also what you do to keep vocally fit as well mm. you have certain routines like i have a friend i mentioned a couple of times on the show who's an opera singer uh in new york and um like she won't go out in the cold because she's mm. afraid it's going to constrict the vocal cords and she won't have dairy products beforehand and things like that even i too as an on-air personality there's certain things i won't do knowing i'm going to have to talk for hours or be out and about for that long what are some of the things that you do to just keep yourself fit, mind, body, and spirit? Great question. Uh, I think first off for my voice is don't live in Atlanta, Georgia, <laughs> because the uh, the allergies here are crazy. Not a, not and a I've just, yeah. Right. I've just been, li- I've just been trying to film a, a TikTok video today and man, like my voice, I sound like I'm really sick and I, I'm not, but it's just because of those allergies. So that's a big thing. Um, of course, of course, when it comes to vocal, when it comes to your voice, um, good technique is going to be the is the the number one thing. Good technique with your singing, even with your speaking as well, making sure you're not doing anything too crazy. Uh, getting adequate warm up and cool down. Um, I have my my voice straws, which are a fantastic product um, that I use to that I use to warm up and kind of calibrate my vocal cords to be ready to go. Um, what else? I love my manuka honey. I've got something here called a a, a, a nebulizer, which helps to hydrate the vocal cords. Um, all kinds of different things, but um, but then of course, uh, it is also just as important for the voice is your is your physical warm up, and so yeah, staying active, staying fit, physically, cardiovascularly. Now, chase tag comes in handy for that. Um, yeah, all of that is super important for the voice, and, and it's something that I'm constantly trying to, you know, uh, trying to get better at because I am. I've been doing this a long time, but yeah, I, I still think that I'm very much a, a, a beginner with all of this and, and still constantly learning, especially since just recently I did my first ever live shows um, as my own, you know, headline act. And so um, that's a whole new, the, being on the road is a whole new game. And so I'm yeah. constantly learning, learning new things for that and about different schedules and rest days and what have you. It's, it's really interesting. It really is. And there's so many puzzle pieces that have to come together to make it all work, as, as you know. And, and mm. with that, are you producing them too? Are you uh, selecting the songs? Are you very ingrained in the creative part of those shows? Um, yeah, uh, like 100%. Like um, our my team is currently myself and my mom and my sister, you know, like uh, so we, we Baldwin, do, we do Baldwin, everything. Baldwin. <laughs> Baldwin, 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 exactly, exactly. And so, yeah, we're doing everything. And so my mom is 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 fantastic and she does a lot of the coordinating, uh, a lot of the um, scouting out different locations and reaching out to them and getting prices and budget, you know, all of that stuff. She's really, really great at. And I am so, so appreciative because I don't know what I'd be doing without without her. I certainly wouldn't be here. But um, She was but, there yeah. on Tony Orlando night too. She was there yeah. saying hi to everybody. And, you know, I, I'm sure she's as thrilled about all of this as you are too yeah, yeah we really we really are uh really are a team and i'm just just like infinitely indebted to her for everything that she has done for 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 me and my sister uh and and yeah we're, we're all in you know we're, we're all in on on all of our on all of our careers and so but yeah no she is she is just a much just as much as part of it. this is our career uh, and i'm just the front man of it but um but we're doing this together and she she helps she helps so much and she writes the songs with me and um and and she's constantly communicating and, and making sure that i uh, if i if mum was not there i probably would have not turned up at the show because i would have forgotten what day it was you know that's right. that's that's me 
Uh, and so I, I love mum so much forever and i can see people in the, in the chat they all know all the people that are at on, on my live streams on my stuff they all know just how important mom is to the how integral she is to to my career but um oh, absolutely yeah even uh, well you and i chatted about putting this together to have you as a guest special guest on the show but even a couple of times your mother and i chatted when you were in training uh right. you know behind the scenes we were chatting uh, he's in training right now well you know we've got all the information we're excited good to go so i that's what it's about i mean my folks the same way my family the same way if you have a loving family that supports you and you support them just in terms of emotionally mm -hmm. and, and being there for one another there really is nothing better right oh like i i i cannot express enough how much i owe everything to to my mom just back from of course like how she's uh raised myself and my sister but then also to yeah just the the day-to-day she is in here in this grind right next to me uh in the foxhole with me if you, if anybody's read david goggins you'll know you'll know what that means but um yeah no uh, uh having having a teammate like that having somebody that's constantly pushing you and constantly uh you know help, helping both of us grow is is uh invaluable and and something that i don't think i i i i said it before i'll say it again i would not be here without without her and so i think she might she'd probably get annoyed of us talking about her for so long but i love her so much and she is so 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 uh just the best all of you will probably say you have the best mum, but i'm sorry you all lose <laughs> He's very competitive, folks. So, you know, <laughs> it started early being competitive right there on stage. <laughs> hey, <I'm coming. laughs> Which I think is really, really cool. And, and, you know, along the way, there's been so many great things that you've done. As I mentioned, the music itself, too. Uh, Say Nothing is another oh, one. Thank you. Tell us about that. Because I know what's going to happen is a lot of our, you know, we call our viewers the levities. That's love and levity together. Mm. Because I said during the show, during the pandemic, I said the show has a lot of light, love, and levity. And one time, as I was mentioning to you, and I've mentioned it before in the show, I said light, love, and levity too fast. I stumbled on my Got words. Tongue -tied. Yeah, tongue-tied. And, you know, have you ever met a New Yorker that can't talk too? So I, <laughs> I, talk, I said it fast. And I said levity. And people were like, Oh my God, what's that word, levity? And I said, it, it just came out. And I said, I guess it's the love and the levity together. And so then they said, okay, guess what? You're now Mr. You're Mr. Enthusiasm. I'm Mr. Levity. This is Levity Hall. They're the Gym Master Show Levity Squad. And you Lovely. now and all the viewers are part of the Levity family. How cool is that? Fantastic. <laughs> well, we, we, we are very, very glad to be here. Thank you. But, but, uh, but yeah, say nothing. Say nothing like... I'm an independent artist through and through, and, and I want to be for as long as possible. I, I really enjoy being part of every single part of the process. And um, Say Nothing was my my foray into a, a bit more of a cinematic orchestral sound. I produce a lot of my music myself, and um, it, when the pandemic started, that was when I really started to produce it myself. And so I'd made this type of song, I made this type of song, but I got really into orchestral like um, you know, composing, and so uh, I was like, I want to, I want to try it, and so that's what "Say Nothing," uh, that's where "Say Nothing" came from. It is still a pop song, and it is still, still, um, still has my voice, but it's something that I really tried. It's got cellos in there, and or and violins, and and piccolos, and and all kinds of different things. So I just, I had a blast, just really, really diving into that world as much as I could with YouTube videos. Uh, I, I'm a scholar of YouTube University and um, and yeah, just really, really falling in love with a different type of different type of music and trying my best to, to make something with that. Which is really cool. I like that scholar of YouTube University. That's right. Yeah, yes. <laughs> That's what ends up happening, right? We all become uh, experts in all these different things. Here's uh Look at this one. Be there, be there, yeah. which is yeah one of the one of the only songs that is not entirely written by myself and, and my mum. But that was yeah uh, a, a collaboration between four of us actually, which was really really fantastic. But because like being able to, I I love being here at home and just 
and just hit and record and, and just seeing what happens. But just as much and something that I'd love to do a lot more is 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 the opposite, going out there and, and meeting people and collaborating with them. So Be There was kind of like a, a, a really great f- uh, introduction into, into that world. Absolutely. And look at this. This must be love. Yeah. Uh, this must be love. I can talk about it's exciting for me because it is uh, it is the first song that is when you as I mentioned you look in the credits yeah. and and uh, and every every name is uh, has Baldwin on the on the end uh, yeah. has Kai Baldwin on the end and so it's the first song that is written by myself and my mum recorded by me performed by me of course produced by me mixed by myself and then as I said the first song that is also mastered by me so um. So yeah, that was I was really proud of that one. Really proud of that one. And also is the closing song on my most recent album, Love by Kai. That's right. Yeah. And how did you pick that as the closing? Because it is a great one to close with. You know what? Uh, this is a kind kind of two part. I, I the end of the song is is quite. Um, all the instrumentation disappears and it just goes back to just a guitar and voice and I'm, I'm saying la 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 la, um, this must be love and, and it felt like a nice closer. But then something else that I noticed is that the song that I wanted to open the album was called Loved and Lost. And then the song I wanted to close the album was This Must Be Love. And so I thought that was really nice. I, the first word of the album is love and the last the last word of the album is love and, 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 it's, and it's love by Kai, right? I tell you, that's that's a good idea. I like that. <laughs> and so and so then I started the album, the my other album, because I, I sorry to give a little bit of context. I released two albums at the same time: Stories yeah. by Kai, Love by Kai. And so I started Stories by Kai with Stories Made with You, right? So that was just a little a little something for myself. Got me a little excited. I was like, ooh, love, love. <laughs> <laughs> two albums the same time, folks. He's ambidextrous. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crazy. I'm 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 right. I'm crazy is what it is what it is. But yeah, twenty twenty six songs. Whoa, that's not one of them. That's that's a little no, bit older. That's but yeah. cool, huh? Get to believe. Get to believe. Um, yeah, that is my second EP uh, released in two thousand and seventeen, around the same time as as Club Mickey Mouse, actually. But um, but yeah, six songs once again, all written by by myself and and um and it was expensive but it was it was a it was really just i love i love being able to yeah release stuff and and tell stories so it was great i I was gonna say yeah you know you're ever the performer uh, singer dancer entertainer extraordinaire but at the same time the songwriting when did the songwriting start for you and if you look at the singing and the dancing and the other things that you do and then you look at the songwriting uh, is, is songwriting one of your favorite things or do you like to be the performer or is it 50 50 all of the above yeah oh man like all of the above feels like a cop-out answer but it is the truth i feel like i'm gonna say performing is is more exciting because but i i think only because of recency bias right i've just had my first shows i've just had that tony orlando concert and so my performing brain is buzzing right still buzzing from that but songwriting was really yeah like as soon as i decided um and actually even a little bit before i decided um that you know being a performer was what i wanted to do being an artist um it was i think it was once again my mom was kind of like okay like she's all in with me and she goes okay well what do you need to do as an artist you're gonna need to probably be able to play an instrument you're probably gonna need to be able to perform as much as you can uh and and then you're gonna be able to need to write your own songs uh, and so just to be as much as a, of a well-rounded artist as I could be. And yeah. so that's where, that's where it came from. I just started and uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love making melodies and I'm really excited to, um, hopefully soon be able to dive into really the different, the different corners of, of songwriting. Um, because, but yeah, I just, I just, I, I adore it and being able to, as I said earlier, uh, but I want to say it again, having having something in your head and then watching it come and become something that people then enjoy uh, and having it be, be in the real world is the best. And so songwriting is a real, real uh, potent form of that, right? You can, you just, it's nothing and you start playing and then it comes out and then it's real. And exactly then, right. and then people, when I was in Nashville and people are then singing along and this, then they know every word. Right. And so having that process is just the best. And so, um, 
I'm not against you know other people writing writing songs for artists, and I'm certainly if 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 somebody wants to somebody comes with the right song, I would for sure do it. But uh, I would for sure sing it. But I I love being part of every part of the process. Who are some of the uh, artists? You, you seem to have an eclectic mix of tastes in music. You like? Yeah, I, I do too. So I can res- can connect, and that resonates with me. Uh, who are some of the artists or performers that? you've admired that have inspired you maybe even some have mentored you that you've always looked up to over the years <laughs> the mentor you sounds like a sounds like a little comment that i that i i'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down no uh, always growing up in terms of my music taste ah i like it's gonna i think it's song dependent of course and and my favorite songs playlist has a is very eclectic has a wide range of um of songs on there from Celine Dion to Post Malone to um to weird obscure uh Japanese songs you know like anime openings whatever um but uh but yeah in terms of uh, as a performer, I gotta say, number one is is Michael Jackson, and I think is for a lot of people, um, and especially growing up and, and starting singing at about ten, my voice was the perfect range for early Michael Jackson, Jackson Five music, and so I did a lot of that growing up. And um, but his perfectionism, his his dedication to his craft is is something that I um, hope to get like like. Not even just how good he was. I'm not sure if anybody can touch that, but um, but just his level of dedication is something that I really try and uh, strive towards. And I, I'm not there yet. I'll be the first to admit I got a long ways, long ways to go. But um, really, really was so inspiring. But um, I also am very inspired by by Charlie Puth. Charlie Puth is somebody who produces all his own music, writes a lot of it as well. And so, um, and so I love being able to get any kind of insight into his process. Uh, Taylor Swift and Ed Sheeran for their songwriting skills and and the way that Taylor has been able to, uh, I'm sure everybody talks about Taylor enough, but she really is incredible and just so talented and, and um, yeah, being able to survive this industry as long as she has and, and being able to evolve as she has is really something, really something to look up to. So um, yeah. yeah, there's a few, there's a few names. Uh, but then, of course, we we can talk more recently about Tony Orlando, right? Oh, mm-hmm. holy Tire dooly! Ribbon. How cool! Tire yellow ribbon. Um, but just like, I'll admit, like my my, I was. Oh, look at that! Look at that photo. It, you see how? Like, I, oh, I I could not be smiling wider. Wow, that was. It's one that of the incredible. nicest guys in and out of the business, and I'm so That's, honored to I call him a dear to friend. Say the and, same thing. Yeah, you uh, know, I, I, was, I'm sure he did the same with you. He called me personally like the day after now that's a day when because that was a three and a half hour for anybody that didn't get a chance to see tony orlando's um epic finale concert he toured around Mm -hmm. the country and he came back home to the new york area where he's from originally and he did the second to last in atlantic city and then he went to the mohegan sun arena his favorite places so he's in his uh, sort of hometown area of new york Mm -hmm. and does his epic three and a half he wanted to beat bruce springsteen's length of show and he By did one minute, I, right <laughs> i said to him i said did you did you it was like three hours and two minutes that springsteen does did you beat it he goes jim i actually did three hours and 20 minutes <laughs> wow but you got a chance so i chatted with him after he called me he actually just to thank me you know for actually being there and being supportive and all because he came on the show as a guest too but you had this wonderful and incredible opportunity to have him actually say, come on stage. Now, there were 10,000 people there in that incredible epic arena with all of us, with all the music and all the memories and all the, and that wonderful salute he did to the veterans in the United yeah, States, wow. the military. So, just so, so many surprise and beautiful elements. And then one of those was, he said, come on stage. And this was something that happened quickly for you. You didn't have six months of prep and knowledge. And this <laughs> no. was, it developed really fast, right? No, yeah, this was the night before. So I like, I had made a cover of, of Tie a Yellow Ribbon um, mm. a, a few months earlier. And this was actually somebody, uh, somebody had bought that as a, as a request for a video. So thank you, Joey, if you're out there, um, because you really got all of this started. Um, but yeah, I, I made that, I made that, I, uh, wow, adored that song. It's one of my favorites now. So much personality. The story just 
punches through so, so well. I, I, I really hope to be able to do that one day with my songwriting. But what a great song, what a great performer. And so I d did a lot of research when I was learning the song and I, I did my best and then I made the video and then that was it. And then um, Mohegan Sun actually reached out to, reached out to me uh, about just coming to watch the show. And, uh, and that was what a remarkable opportunity just to be able to be there for something so, so iconic. Um, and the end of such a, such a, such a iconic, uh, stage career, of course, it's not the end of his career. He's still, he's still very busy, but, um, but so yeah, I, we said yes. And we were very excited to just be able to see it, but to be able to actually be a part of it, I was so not expecting, and then I, I got a call on the hotel phone the night before. Um, I was actually doing an audition, uh, and I and the the hotel phone rang. I was like, "What is this? Who could this be?" And then it's the front desk, and they say, "We have another guest on the phone for you. Is it all right if I patch them through?" Imagine if I'd said no. Oh, I'm busy. No, but I said yes, yeah, sure. And they said, "Okay, here is Mr. Orlando." And uh, I said, "Oh, okay." And so I chatted to him for a little bit, and. Um, and he said, do you have any tracks? I said, yes. He said, pick one and, and, and sing it tomorrow. And whole, whole, holy dolly, like what, what an opportunity. But I want to say, and I, I tried to say this on stage, but I want to give it a bit more emphasis right now. He, he, was, he wanted me to sing whatever I wanted to sing. And now, and when I mentioned maybe doing a, 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 an original song, he was all for it. And I cannot stress enough how amazing that is. Like as an independent artist, as a young up and coming artist, mm -hmm. trying my best to get my original music out there, to have the opportunity to play that in front of, as you said, 10,000 people, that's mind blowing. Um, and so I, I, I really, really cannot thank him enough for that. Now, I didn't end up singing an original song because thinking about it more, I was like, no, 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 this isn't about me. This isn't about, uh, this is about the people watching, right? And, and we've got to give them the best show that we can. And so I ended up going with, uh, with I'm sure you know the, the Andy Gibbs song, I Just Want to View Everything, which is just, <gasps> what a song. Um, a but, one, yeah. but yeah, like, I just felt, I felt really, really, I felt undeserving and not because of some kind of imposter syndrome, but just because everybody in that room had such a, such a wonderful connection with Tony. He's been, he has been doing this for decades, over 60 years. Yeah. And so for me to just come in at the end and then, and then to be able to be a part of the be on stage, yeah. um, was just so mind blowing and just really is a testament to his his empathy and his just joy for it. And, and, and just, he was just so kind. It was amazing. He's a real entertainer's entertainer. And of course he was in the industry too, from the business side of things, working with the right. record companies and just really has seen every aspect. And you just saw the reaction from the audience and there was all different age groups in that audience mm. too, which was right. really, we were talking, I was talking to him after about that. I said, Tony, did you notice? I know it's a blur because you're coming down from the high of it, but did you notice all the different age groups? And uh, I thought that was really so cool, you know, but to have the opportunity to yeah. be on the stage and you were saying that, and I think there was even some comparison on stage when you sang that song to Andy give as well a little bit. I'm sure you've heard that before. A couple of times, Mr. Baldwin, huh? <laughs> um, like, what can I even say? What a comparison and, and, and wow. Like I, um, they're incredible. And, but even more so than that, people can be good singers, but every single person, the more that I've learned about Andy and, and the Gibbs, every single person I've spoken to has just the first thing they say is what an amazing kind-hearted person he was and um and that's the thing that i want to be hopefully compared to as i as i as i dive into this into this uh this industry and just uh it was just so amazing to hear um stories about how just how awesome he he was and how awesome that family is um but yeah i'm just i'm just I'm still, uh, I'm blown away by all of it. Being able to be in the same conversation as them, as these legends is, is something that I will, I will earn. I will earn as time goes on, but, uh, but really is amazing. That's a great way to say it and look at it, you know, earning it as opposed to it just 
falling on your lap. There's just so much more richness and depth to earning it and knowing that you've worked hard and you've earned it. And then that got recognized. And then maybe another door opened, another opportunity came your way and you've earned that. You've proven yourself, not only to others, but to yourself. And that's a right. very cool way to do that. You're, you're, you know, the family, your parents, the folks must have really instilled that into you early to understand that in reality for joy and fulfillment, that's how it really should work. It shouldn't be just something that happens and it's thrown in your lap overnight. It, you know, that's exciting too, but there is that train on the track and the earning of it and coming across all these people and having these opportunities and celebrating that and remembering it, like all these things we've just shown. And this is just a short list of things you've done already in the span of time you've been here on planet earth and much more to come, but it, it is the earning of it that makes it, it's the ride, you know, it, that it makes it so much more deeper and joyful and special, right? Not just achieving it, but everything that you did to get there. Well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, um, like you said it, you said it perfectly and I'm going to talk, but I think I'm just going to say the exact same thing you did. There's, um, there, you got to fall in love with the process, right? Because that's the thing that you're doing every day. And so the, the results, they take care of themselves and they're not what I'm here for uh, at all. And so, um, being able to have been so far, I've been a part of some amazing, amazing, uh, productions and, and, and things it's, it's, it's the best, but not because of the size of the production, but it's because of the, the people that you get to work with, the talent that you get to, and the skill that you get to be around, right? Like that's, that's the important thing. And yeah, I've spoken many times with my mom about this. Like if we had somebody that came and said, Hey, here's $10 million, here's Madison square garden sold out in three days. Um, yeah, I don't think I would take it. I don't think I would take it. Um, because you're so right. It's, it's like the, the, these, these most recent shows that I just did my first shows. Um, and we had about 70 to a hundred people there and, and they're people that I, I know their faces and I know their names and I get to say, thank you. Um, those are just as if, if not more special than, um, than, than the, the maybe one day in the future world tour, you know? So, uh, it's, it's, that's yeah that's what it's really about for me and, and I'm, I'm it's just so exciting to think i i have been doing this a long time a, a, at least relative to my life you know and but to think that this is really just the beginning and all the stuff we're going to make and do if i just got to the finish line it, it would be boring so um exactly right yeah you know I, and just, I was just thinking about all the places you've traveled to like you said all the places you've gone to and you know all those memories um like this is, ah, a, this, yeah, very nice. this is a great shot. I love, you probably went up to, maybe you went up to, um, unless this is, this is the other side of the bridge. There's that area where you can take the car up, you go through the tunnel, take it up to the very top. And then you get these stunning views of San Francisco. That's the Golden Gate Bridge mm -hmm. in San Francisco, California, everyone. If you don't, if you're watching around the world and don't know. And that's an epic shot lined up there with the guitar and the, the bridge and just, it's really a cool shot. And there is this area where you can go up to the top and then get all these stunning shots of the skyline of the bridge. There's just something special. And you're looking towards probably is that the sunrise or the sunset? The sunset. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I think it was my mom or my sister took that photo right there. Uh, <laughs> Another and, Baldwin and production. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So no, yeah, we, we, uh, a couple of years ago, we did a, a road trip around, uh, around America and I, we, how many states was that road trip? I think it was about. I think it was about 12 or 13. Um, and we tried to make, make videos and make music along the way. Um, but yeah, we, we love traveling and, and we don't know how long we're going to be here in America. We hope for as long as we can, but you know, as, as I said, the immigration uh, is, is, is in process right now. So while we're here, we're taking the opportunity to try and see as much as it, as much of it, uh, as much as it of it as we can. There we go. English. Yeah. Um, right. and, <laughs> And yeah, we, we love traveling. We love going to, that was the Golden Gate Bridge, but we love going to the really weird, obscure, obscure world's biggest ball of twine or, or something like that. You know, right. <laughs> that, that's our stuff. That's the stuff we love. Yeah. You've had an opportunity to travel uh, all over the place too. There we go. Go, yeah, is, ghost town. Yep. Yeah. Which is really nice. And look at this. <laughs> Thank you, man. 
Thank, yeah, thank you for these memories. That was like uh, Hi Baldwin reaching new heights. Ah, I like it. I like it. I gotta that go back and cool. re re I gotta recaption that photo. I was gonna say, huh? Um, um yeah, there's Big Bear, that's Big Bear in, in California. Yeah. Um it's all yeah. great shots. That's a great shot Times too. Square, Times Square, thank you. Times Square, New York City. And look at this. We dug <laughs> this out, huh? That is in Pennsylvania. Do you want me to talk about this for a second? Sure, absolutely. This is just really funny. So, as I mentioned, I play Chase Tag, and and my sister in the in the uh, the skin colored dress there, where she she also plays Chase Tag. And so, uh, there was a competition up in Pennsylvania, and um, and so we got a few of us, as you can see, all there, and we all we all shared an Airbnb. And this Airbnb that we had was the most the coolest looking, like, as you see, like vintage, cool wallpapers, uh, Airbnb. And so we just, we, I don't know, we just, we just, we wanted to do something with that. And so we all brought the fanciest clothes we, we, we had at the time and, uh, and did a photo shoot all of us together, our chase tag team. And so uh, <laughs> we ended up actually printing these as postcards and sending them to those people in the photos. Um, it was, uh, it was just lovely. And, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a fantastic event at the at the Dexterity Depot, uh, Chase Tag Chase Tag Quad. I like that the Dexterity Depot live tonight from the Dexterity Depot. Ah, uh, yeah, I think I think that I think that I competition was live streamed, so it was literally oh, okay. live at the Dexterity Depot. Look at this cool shot. Ah, yeah, uh, I can talk about that. Well, that was just as I said, I started on We're YouTube surprising doing you with doing these photos, covers. Aren't we? Yeah, you certainly <laughs> are. You certainly are. I'm enjoying this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I started on YouTube with covers, and uh, and I still do. I still do a lot of covers, though they they have shifted more to TikTok and Instagram. But um, I wanted to do a cover of a Spice Girls song, uh, but it's difficult to do by myself, of course. So um, I got these these guys that that I know there that you see in the photo, and um, and we made the Spice Guys. We yeah. spy the Spice Guys, and we made a yeah. cover of Wannabe. So that was fun. Um, and you, yeah, you can see Casey, Jake, Michael, and Matt. Matt on the very right is currently playing Michael Jackson on Broadway in MJ the Musical. So oh, it, it, right. just incredible. Wow, I got some. Really... I got some very talented people in in my video there. But um, wow. We, but yeah, that was good fun. Let's get him on the show. We'll chat with him about that. Uh -huh. that ah, really, yeah. Really, wow. Really nice. I That'll want to be... chat with him about it for sure. Yeah. It's it's been very cool <laughs> seeing his Instagram stories of him, that you know, is... hitting the hitting the MJ pose. It's been awesome. He's just doing it, right? That's so cool. Mm. Now this was something I I saw this shot too. Tell us about this. This was really cool. Thank you. This is the cover art for Depression Is a Monster that we spoke yeah. about earlier. Right. Um, and yeah, I made this myself in in Photoshop. I've made most of my cover arts myself. As I said, independent artist, right? We I wear a lot of hats. But um, Depression is a Monster and the short film that I made alongside Depression is a Monster, which is the music video, I also made another short film to, that went along Depression is a Monster. But the one I'm talking about right now is the music video, and but I feel more comfortable calling it, it, it a short film. Um, but it is all about the idea of wearing a mask, right, of, of waking up and putting on a, a persona to, to get through the day, and a lot of people don't realize what other people are going through because they're wearing this mask. And so... Um, that's what the, the the short film was about, um, and and that was what the, the the cover art was was meant to represent. That the that there's a lot of a lot more going on underneath the surface, underneath the underneath mask, and to try and the the goal, of course, and and something that I think is that I'm very lucky that I that I have achieved is that I don't have a mask, and and um, I'm really really, I think it just lifts a lot of weight off of your shoulders and a lot of unnecessary weight. A lot of people are um, trying to change themselves to fit in to a friend group or, or, or other people, um, and that's unnecessary. But then, of course, we have a different discussion about the mask uh, above what you're feeling, and that is also also um, unnecessary and something that is very important that you address. I'm now talking to anybody out there who is uh, who is wearing a mask. Go talk to somebody. Go talk to a therapist or a trusted family member or, or school teacher or what have you. It's very important. Absolutely. Sage and wise advice. It's so very, very true. Always reach out. There are people there who care. And sometimes it doesn't seem like there are, but there are people there who care and can help and uh, allow you, give you the space to talk it out. And, you know, because right. life has its moments with all the fun and lights and joy and everything. 
life has its moments and sometimes yeah. we all need a little help. And one of the best, I always say one of the best investments you can ever make in your life is in yourself. Well, of and course, of course, a, you're, you're you and, and, and that's, that's right. got to be the number one priority. And yeah, I feel like I, I, I've got this new theory that I'm working and uh, let me know what you think. But I think that happiness is not an emotion, but is a skill. Yes. It's very, it's very interesting to think about. And just like how we, I think joy is an emotion, but I think happiness is a skill. And I think yes. it's something that like any skill uh, needs practice and it needs, and it needs dedicated time, right? If you want to build muscles and get strong, which is a skill, um, you need to go to the gym and you need to put in, you need to put in the exercise. And I, I think um, all of these things that, that help with happiness is that, is that mental exercise, right? And I think it's just as, if not more important as the, as the physical exercise. And so, um, yeah, I, 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 I always say like there's 8 billion people on the planet. There's going to be many, 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 many people who just adore you and want the best for you. Um, and so if you haven't found those people, uh, if they're not your community, that's, that's, that's completely fine. They're out there, uh, but it's going to be on you to go and find them, you know, but, um, yeah. and some, yeah, there's people who dedicate their lives to, to helping, helping people get through tough times. So they're out there and it takes incredible strength to reach out, but it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it. Absolutely. My friend, you know, so many things you've been a part of, as I mentioned, look at this cool shot. Oh, what a great shot. What a yeah. great shot. Um, yeah, yeah. Nick and Josh, the, uh, the, the creators behind, behind the club Mickey Mouse, um, they, are they are extremely talented dudes and, uh, and yeah, I just, once again, like I spend most of my time working on Kai Baldwin stuff and that is where I'm, I'm, uh, wearing, as I said, a lot of different hats and doing a lot of different parts of the job. And so, uh, and, and it's what I love doing. It is what I love doing, but it's also a really, really great experience to be able to be hired for something and just be the performer. And so being able to then watch other people be masters of their craft is really <laughs> lovely, really fantastic. And so that was one of those times being able to see, as I said, Nick and Josh and Miles and uh, all those people on the, uh, you guys don't know who they are, but I do, I'm thinking of them. And, and actually Miles, for example, then did work with me as the cinematographer on Depression is a Monster. And he went and, and most recently he filmed my, my most recent Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles show. So, you know, these are people that I hope to collaborate with for a long time and they're just incredibly talented and I loved being able to watch them work. That's so awesome. Tell us about, you know, when you get a chance to work with people and their friends and get to work with them again and sort of have a rhythm and uh, positive vibes, positive energy and mm -hmm. everything just comes together. That is really golden. And then there's the internet and yes. there is Instagram and YouTube and TikTok and all the rest. And all of these incredible videos, when did the idea to really immerse yourself in this world come about, my friend? <laughs> um, when did it? Well, it's it's certainly not my idea. It's uh, it's it's as an independent artist, it is the way, right, to be able to um, try yeah, and get your career role and, and trying to get any momentum. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so and so, as I said, I've been making YouTube videos and covers for uh, approaching 10 years now. I started with my Uptown Funk cover, uh, many years ago, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's always been the way to be able to grow your audience, to be able to grow your community and, and get people, get people in my little corner of the internet. Right. And so, um, the, the idea of, I've just been doing it a long time. And when you do a lot of them, it grows in its own way. And so, uh, the multi kais, which is, a, a the idea where, where it really kicked off, um, that was just uh, about about five six months ago, and and I, I wanted to harmonize. I wanted to practice harmony, uh, but I didn't have anybody to sing with, and so I would just duplicate myself. And I would I would there there we go. There's the multi kai. I would I would uh, record mul myself multiple times singing the different harmony and melody parts, and then I would edit them together. And so there you see that is my the music video for How Deep Is Your Love by the Bee Gees. Um, and uh, that I just released a few days ago. But my original cover of that song uh, is kind of what kickstarted this most recent 
wave of Kai Baldwin content because uh, it went went quite well on 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 TikTok and, and Instagram and 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 those places. So yeah, it, the multi Kai's has been a, a really fun staple. But I'm constantly looking for just ways to make these videos as entertaining as I can and also have as much fun with them as I can. I love editing. I love visual effects. And so I'm constantly trying to find ways to, to, to make it real fun for myself. If you're just joining us, everybody, I am your host and uh, executive producer of the Gym Master Show Live. We're here in the New York area in the United States, beaming all across the world. If you're enjoying this episode of our series, then share it. It's uh, on the YouTube channel right now, Gym Masters TV. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give this episode a thumbs up, like, share it with the world, leave a comment, interact with us as well. We say hello to all of the viewers and our lovities that are commenting in the Lovity Hall chat room. We see those comments. We love all of you. And again, binge watch hundreds and hundreds of episodes with celebrity friends and guests who stop by for not interviews. These are conversations that we have with our very special guests who are friends. And if they weren't friends when they came on the show, they've become friends and they always come back. And uh, Kai Baldwin is my very special guest coming to us uh, from Atlanta. He's an extraordinary singer and songwriter, musician, multi-instrumentalist, dancer, producer, and all the rest. <laughs> and he makes his own toast. <laughs> yeah. He does it all. He does it all. You know, a couple of people mentioned this too, and I'd be remiss if I didn't, because it is a, was a great project, a Snow Day. And ah. this was something special because you co-starred in that 2022 Nickelodeon movie, the remake Snow Day, and that streamed on Paramount Plus, which is cool. Yeah. What was it like working on that project? Oh, like I feel like I've said this about everything, but it's just the best. Uh, <laughs> hey, like, there's a theme I, here. There's a theme. Yeah, <laughs> I love what I do, man. I, I love it. Um, I, I am a am a musician and a, and an actor, and I always say yeah. both. But uh, I don't get the opportunity to act very much because you know people have got to hire you, and so uh, being able to be on set, to be able to be a part of that in such a in such a big way, and to be able to really, it was a movie musical, and so I was singing and dancing and acting and laughing and having the best time in the snow, in the Canadian snow in Montreal, and um, and spending just two months up there, uh, and being able to. Yeah, as mentioned, be a part of that. The director Michael Lembeck is is incredibly talented, and he'd worked on uh, he won an Emmy for directing Friends for just for example. And so, um, yeah, being able to I feel like it's a common thread. I've said it too often in this in this conversation, but being able to watch him work, uh, his decision making, because oh, he's a director of a of a of a of a of a movie and there are many many moving parts and so being able to be in the room with him as he's making these decisions uh was really really cool to watch um but yeah yeah uh i got to i got to meet some incredible people work with them um one of them became my roommate uh and then uh and then yeah and then get to sing and dance in the snow it, it was the best is that something that you would like to do? Do you enjoy the behind the scenes part of this industry that we're all in? Uh, do you like the directing and the producing and the creative as much as you are out front on stage, on camera? Do you love the behind the scenes, putting it all together? And is that something yeah. that you could see yourself taking a deeper dive into as your career continues along the way, my friend? I would love to. Yes. Like it Yes, yes, a very, very wholehearted yes. I producing movies and things. Uh, like I, I'm not very good at at, at that. Um, producing music, I can do, but producing producing shows, I, I'm not sure about that one. But directing is something that I have um, got a lot of a li little experience with my own music videos and and what have you. And um, and I really, really do enjoy. I I love having control. <laughs> And so that's a big reason as to why I'm a, I'm an independent artist. I, I don't want I don't want people telling me what is in my head, right? And so and so um, being able to make the decisions and 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 have something in your head and have it come out the way that you you know you hope it to be, uh, it's the best. And so and so yeah, the uh, being a director is is that is that in a nutshell. So I would love to do that more. 
that's really, really cool to have an opportunity to do stuff like that and to, you know, be able to create in a way that, you know, reaches people on these deep levels, which I think is awesome as, as you've continued to be able to do. Take a look at another great shot here. Look at this. This goes back a little bit here, huh? It does go back a little bit. Yeah, perfect. Like, as I said, I, I made a lot of, I've made a lot of covers over the years um, and what a great location. Whew. But, um, but that one, yeah, I remember being very excited because... I produced the backing track for that cover. You, normally, I just downloaded it from the internet somewhere, but I remember I produced that one, um, and I, I remember spending a lot of time listening to Perfect, probably a little too loud in my headphones, maybe not very good for my eardrums. But I was trying to be like, "Oh, what's that little, what's that little shaker back in the background? I need to replicate the rhythm for my cover." And so, I listen back now, and technically, I had a long way to go, and I still do, of course. But um, that was really one of my first forays into into production, and so I, I loved that. And you can't see from the photo, but that suit jacket had a big hole in the back because I burnt it on a candle as I was sitting there. So you can't <laughs> see it, but uh, but you know, I still use the I still use the jacket. I still got a lot out of it. But yeah, it was good fun. So you would have to make sure you put that on your sizzle reel. <laughs> ah, Jim, that was but good. Up, that was but good. Up, yes. I need, I need a little. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. <laughs> the Irish in me comes out every once in a while. <laughs> I see. I see. The Irish. <laughs> it's great. Uh, here's another going back oh. in time. Huh? Yeah, you, you want me to talk about the beginning? The beginning is what it sounds like. It was my first yeah. original music. It was my first right. EP. It yeah. had four original songs on it. Um, and I worked with uh, Sean Carey, a, a producer in Australia. And um, the reason I bring him up is because I still I still work with him to, to this day. He, he produced a few songs on my most recent album. And this was, I think, in November. I think it'll be 10 years since this uh, EP came out. But um, right. as mentioned, as mentioned, I love having control, and I like I like being able to be creative and not have people stifle that. And so, as I was I was thirteen, and just starting my first uh, original music, and I was working with these adults, and I was having meetings with these adults, and. It was just very important for me and my mum. Of, of course, this she was this was her priority of just like we need somebody who is going to just um, be a professional, be able to get a professional quality sound, but be able to let Kai take the reins. And so, for uh, we met with a few people, and they were like, "No, they're trying to change Kai, right?" And I remember it was very very funny. My sister, who's two years younger than me, so was eleven at the time. She was sitting in one of these meetings and. Me and my mom were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is going really well. And then we left and we were like, yeah, that was great. And then my sister was like, no, 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 no. She was doing her maths homework in the corner, but she was listening the whole time. She was like, no, they're trying to change Kai. They're trying to change his message, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, oh, yeah. So the reason I say all this is because we found Sean and I cannot stress enough how amazing he was at letting me try, like letting me dip my toe into creativity kind of for the first time and be able to ask him a million questions and give his professional opinion while also while also letting me take the reins um being able to have that as my first as my first project uh with my original music is something that i i cannot undervalue and something that i i really 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 hold highly so uh a massive thank you to sean who is not here who is not listening but um i will forever value him because that was just a real a real good insight into what I want my career to be like, you know? Would you say that you are, you know, I've asked this question of others. Um, are you a perfectionist and are you very hard on yourself? Do you demand a lot from yourself? Mm. Well, to answer the first question, yes. Yes, I am a perfectionist to the annoyance of other people. Sometimes um, I will spend way too long on a on a something that you'll see for two frames or a video or something that is way in the background of the song and they're like the song is due it was due two weeks ago and i go i know but that snare needs to be half a db higher um you know uh but yeah so i, I, I there's always a balance right because of course some people say the perfectionism is the best part is the thing that makes it the best and but then you look at somebody like prince and from what i've gathered he was very much just like 
do it first take. If there's mistakes, that's the way it was meant to be. Get it out there and just make as much as you can. So I'm constant, and even right now I'm having this thought process with myself a lot where it's like, where's that balance, right, of trying to find spending three months on a song versus making 20 songs in that time and getting better that way, you know. So I'm trying to find that balance. And then the other thing is, am I hard on myself? Um uh, yes, but I think in a, in a healthy way, I, I think a lot of people can be, can be too hard in a way that is stifling, uh, and, and maybe stops themselves from ever e even starting in the first place. Right. And that's something that I've seen is very common from people in my, in my, co uh, Instagram comments or in a live stream chat. And they'll say like, I want to start, but they're too scared of being bad. Mm, and right. that's something that I was never scared of. I, I, I love, I love losing. Um, the micro losing, not, not of course the massive losing, but I love getting it wrong. I love making mistakes, uh, because that's when I feel like you're learning the most and when you're, and when you're getting better the most. And so, um, that was something that I've never been afraid of. Uh, but sure. When, when I want to, when it comes to my content, uh, I, I do a lot of takes <laughs> because I'm like, nah, that one note wasn't good enough. And so I got to go do it again. That's been today. I blew my voice out because I got a good take. I got a good take and I've got it sitting there and I listened back. I said, ah, that's not good enough. And so I've been spending, I blew my voice out trying to get this one note. And Actually, it, somebody was asking how your voice is today. <laughs> yeah. You know, like the, the allergies are kicking into gear. And so I'm very annoyed about that. And so, uh, that's frustrating, but it's um thankfully you know I'm happy and healthy and I can still sing so I can still talk to you Jim so I'm 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 happy about that. You're a trooper. What do you do to balance things out? You know you can ride those highs of all the creativity and all the time that it takes. You know the blood, sweat, and tears to put everything together. It's a very fast moving career. How do you balance it? What are some of the things that you do? Those go to like for me. You know, here on the East Coast in the Northeast in the United States, we grew up by the ocean. So, mm. I mean, I mentioned it several times on this show with guests and, and the viewers. Um, I love the ocean. So, the ocean, swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing, floating in it, whatever it is, the ocean is a place that calls my name and I need to be near it and a part of it because it's greater than me. It's bigger than me. It's more powerful mm. than me. It's beautiful. The sun rises from it, the sun sets in it. It's through pandemics or whatever else goes on in our crazy world, the tide still comes in and out every day. There's just something about the ocean for me. How about for you? What are the go-tos, the places, the things you do to sort of stay kai and stay balanced through it all? My dog Snow. Yes, that's the only answer. Um, let me pull up photos of Snow, everybody. I've got a million. Oh, there's one on my, fo on my phone right there. Oh, I turned it off. Um, my my our, our snowy is just and anybody who's on my live streams they know they know our snow is just the love of all of our lives and and um and just is a constant is constant joy um i need to find some photo let me find a good photo of snow come on come on come on uh here we go here this is this is one of my favorites can you see this photo of oh uh, let's go close What, I love her what so kind much. of what kind of uh, dog? She's actually so she's a rescue, so she's a, and she's a bit of everything, but she's mostly German Shepherd, which is interesting. Uh, how um, old? She is. We think about three or four. Uh, um, and and yeah, we we love her. So too. every day is a snow it's, day. That's right. And you know what? We actually we got snow in the movie. We got snow in the movie. Uh, in one of the scenes at the beginning, they needed photos of us to like put around the house, right? Ah, um, oh, there's Moose. Um, and so <laughs> and so we, we sent in a picture of snow, and she's in the corner for a few frames of, of the Nickelodeon movie. It was great. Um, yeah. So just recently, just a few a couple of weeks ago, we were in California for a chase tag um, training training uh, week with my team, the Hollywood Freerunners. Uh, you can see on our on the left there is our is our, our coach and main man uh, Amos Rindau. But um, we were there and we found this uh, yeah this this stray just on the street. So there's Moose and. Um, he did not have an owner. He did not have a collar. He had no chip, and so he was covered. He was he was very skinny. He was covered in ticks, massive ticks. Yeah. That was disgusting. Um, but we yeah we brought him we brought him back to our to our Airbnb and and we 
we tried our best to find a home for him and we ended up it was it was a very it was a stressful couple of days but we found a, a rescue that was able to uh able to take him and so yeah we love dogs we we adore dogs with everything we have see he i think moose got it all confused moose was trying to get on TikTok, but only got the tick part of it forgot the top uh, part and that's yeah. what happened <laughs> it was crazy i've got yeah. some videos on my phone like because they we he takes the medicine and then they fall off right and the the ticks and so i have i have one where i was like stomping them like and the blood was oh it was disgusting man but it was um i cannot believe that they were on his on his body it was it was disgusting and i'm so sad that so many dogs have to be going through that ah oh, that's a that's a big thing it's, we want to we want to do tough thing summer song talk oh. about the ocean right there we go there you go you're good with these transitions man <laughs> um yeah summer song is one of the songs on the dead believe ep which is the second one with that black and white cover art that you showed earlier yeah. uh and yeah and it was just it was a song that um i'd written before even moving to America many years prior. Uh, and it was just fun. It was just fun. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I was, I wanted to make it, but that EP was right in the middle of my voice change. So it was, uh, there's some rough, there's some, oh, there's some rough vocals in there, but, um, <laughs> but that's what I love about, about doing all of this yourself. I, I know that there was a conversation with, I uh, that I had with my first manager when I came over here to, America. And that was kind of this discussion of like a lot of people, the way that it's usually done is they will, they will wait and they will train and they will develop and they will write songs and they'll write hundreds of songs and then they'll pick the best couple and they'll put it together and they'll wait years and years and years and then they'll make their big debut. Right. And that's the way that it's always done. And some people would argue that's the smarter way to do it. The other way is to just go and to just make stuff right and so and that's the way that i've been doing and also the way that i love doing because for myself being able to look back here and see all these photos and these memories of things that of my journey right and and i i have improved a lot since some of these since some of these earlier things and that one was as i said right in the middle of my voice change and i had a weird american accent going on in some of those songs but it was it's 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 a representation of my journey right and so being able to be back there uh, and, and yeah and document that with my work you know it's it's such an amazing amazing thing to be able to look back at it really really is so many incredible keep on keeping on keeping on keeping on was about was about the pandemic was about uh yeah yeah it was about that and i made that you know in our home at that music video that's a great one and crayon, crayon, crayon. Too was another one that was thank very important. you yeah thank you crayon was the uh was the first song of mine that i produced and so uh as i mentioned earlier i started producing when when COVID started and so um it was yeah it's just a song about not growing up too quickly and and Correct, uh right. yeah and, Great, and yeah thank you thank you man yeah. i'm really proud of that song yeah I, I i always tell people you know we're not necessarily we're just Big kids in adult clothing. That's all we mm. really are. Big kids in adult clothing. Don't ever yeah. fully don't ever fully grow up. Keep the kid inside, right? That's that's at least the hope I, I think. And a lot of people <laughs> I feel a lot of people uh you know, when they're teenagers or what have you, even earlier, sometimes they can they can try and get rid of that, can try and squander that a little too quickly. Um, but, and then they get, and they, they get later on and they feel like, oh, I got rid of that too quickly. I grew up too fast. But one, I think, uh, yeah, let's not do that. But then two, I think it's, it's not too late. You, you can always embrace that, that, that inner, inner child. And, and I think uh, like a lot of the things, yeah, that, that, that becoming an adult means is what like becoming self-conscious about things not wanting to not wanting to try things and be bold and, and be loud and and um i think a lot of those things would help a lot of people right and so if we can bring yeah. that back that would be great i always i always thought it was so weird there was kind of a time when people started being scared to be first in a class project mm -hmm. you know or if they're like if we're dancing if we're dancing like who wants to show their work like there comes a time in, you know, in that, that tween age where some people suddenly get scared. It's like, what happened? 
what happened? And and something that, and it was always something that I really tried to avoid. I always was first. I always just make sure that nobody else wants to go first. And then I put my hand up to go first because aren't we doing this because we enjoy it and we want to do it. So let's go up and do it, you know. Just go and do it, right? Exactly. Mm. Which is, that's important. And that's a good uh, mantra to have. Just keep going and keep moving forward and taking it on. Mm. Progress is happiness, we always, we always like to say. So that way you're um, not invisible. Ah, uh-huh, there we go. Music video out now. You just got my my Facebook banners from throughout the years. I recognize all of these. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Invisible uh, is one of my favorites of my originals. Also on the Dare to Believe EP, collaborated with Jillian Shea Spader, and um, that music video was a whole is a whole story. But you put um, that together, huh? Mm. Yeah, well, the the music video was yeah we we put that together and for that for that ballroom scene that you see there we try we we hired somebody we hired this this you know, big professional dude to do the cinematography and, ooh, he did not deliver, unfortunately. Uh, and heads were cut off and things were out of focus and there were light stands in the background and that was a whole, that was a whole thing. And, and me and the ed- me on my laptop trying to edit it, I'm like, what do I do? But, um, but yeah, that was, that was, once again, all of these, being able to look back and see all of these, these stories and these memories and it was great fun. Yeah. Uh, be there with Reagan. Reagan was on Club Mickey Mouse with me, and she is extremely, extremely talented. She was just recently cast in a Marvel TV show. Uh, oh, she was wow. over in Japan cool. filming something else. Reagan is an incredible rapper. Um, but Be There, you know how I was saying I do everything myself. Well, yeah. as Be There is the one where I'm not. <laughs> so right. it was co-written with other people, but That's then also right. Nick right. and Josh, the co-creators of Club Mickey Mouse, um, I, I asked them to come do the music video with me. And so, and so that was all them. They, they edited it, they shot it, they, they directed it. And, um, it was, it was beautiful footage and it was a song that, um, that, uh, kind of goes under the radar with my discography, but I really enjoy, I really enjoy. You've got a beautiful instrument there in front of you, huh? Tell us about it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, this is just the, this is the native instruments, complete control S88 keyboard. Um, I did not prepare that. Uh, no, so this is a MIDI keyboard, so it can be any it can be any sound I want it to be. Did I wonder. You want to I wonder the ivories I could, at all for us? Or? I, I I wonder if I could, because this is my live streaming setup that I've got up for here. So, I think if I go like, this, can I can I hear it? Oh, okay. Wait, it. wait yeah, one second, that. everybody. I need to, because it's only in the right the right monitor so i need to go or say hello here. to everybody watching we see all the comments coming in thanks so much for all of your love and support of this episode and all the many episodes of the gym master show live entertainment lifestyle celebrity talk show series definitely come see us again we're here live and we also uh, have archived episodes on our youtube channel gym masters tv and you can of course catch kai uh, i am kai baldwin on all of the social media platforms his website kaibaldwin.com and i'm at gym masters tv on facebook and x and instagram so come say hi and come see us again on the gym masters show series we love having you here all right <laughs> thank you thank you love that's it the love you got it that's it yeah what I is do, your, does, I your, do. does your fan base have a do they call themselves anything have they named not, not, anything? Not yet. I, every now and then, there's, there's a little bit of a brainstorming session in the in the Discord server from from people. But I don't think anything stuck just yet. But I'm not going to be part of it. I'm not going to be part of that. I think I think for they will do I, it. I'm It'll excited. Own, I'm excited right? to see what happens naturally. Exactly. It's, that's what happened with me when I said love and levity and spurted that right. levity word out, and boom, it just. It just happens. That's they it. were like, that's the one. That's, that's the, one. the one. I tell you, I want to definitely say thank you so much, too, to all of the people you have hidden behind all the doors, <laughs> downstairs, upstairs. They're all being very generous and quiet and just like. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no the, he's got, the, he's got uh, you know, folks visiting there, folks. <laughs> right, right. Well, yes, they, they, I'm not sure they're here right now. I had somebody here over the weekend and that's why uh, I was saying to him or my, uh, my, my, myself and my mom's beds are usually right. Not usually, but they have been right here because we've had people staying, but he just went back to Florida yesterday, but then we had somebody else staying in that room last night. So we're, you know, we're trying to be as, cause people are traveling here to train chase tag a lot to, uh, to Atlanta. And so we're trying to see, 
you know, and what we can, we're trying to help out with a place to stay. But it's like an Airbnb. We, Baldwin's <laughs> Airbnb. <laughs> I see. I chase tag, chase tag at Airbnb. Yeah, it's our speakeasy. <laughs> ah, you see the speakeasy? Yeah, speakeasy yeah. members in chat. Hello, guys. That's it. Um, how you all doing? It's good to see you guys. Uh, that's it. It takes a village for sure. All right. What did yeah. uh, What did you want to do? Well, oh, I didn't have anything planned, just yeah. so you guys know. But yeah. um, I don't know if I'm here on the piano. If you guys want to hear something on the piano, I'm wondering. I'm wondering if I should do a little uh. A little, little original. We were talking about Say Nothing earlier. Sure, yeah, absolutely. I, uh, the stage is yours, my friend. Thank you very much. Now, this is a this is a bit of a favorite. I know that, um, you know, as I, I live stream twice a week on, on, on YouTube and Facebook, and so this one gets requested quite often. Let's see if my allergy-ridden voice, uh, <laughs> voice can do it, but I'm excited to play it for you all. I hope that you all... Enjoy. Absolutely. Here's Kyle. Oh, I've got Bowling. some reverb. Oh, reverb's kind of nice, 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 nice. It's in Stereo. Kai <laughs> Baldwin coming to you live on the Gym Master Show, everybody. We hope you're enjoying yourself. beautiful that is Thank really you, really beautiful what inspired you to to pen that beauty 
Oh, thank you so much. Well, it's interesting. None of my songs, at least very few, I think there's one in there, uh, are based off of original, uh, uh, personal stories, uh, I should say. They're all stories. Um, and so that one was, interestingly, we were watching the TV show Angel. Do you know it? The spin-off oh, sure. of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Right. We're massive yeah. Buffy fans. Yeah. And um, the character of Angel, he was telling somebody to shut up. and But instead <laughs> of saying shut up, he said, just say nothing. And it was a bit of a funny moment. But that phrase kind of stuck in my head. And so, you know, when you're songwriting, if phrases stick in your head, sometimes it then develops into its own thing, and that's what happens. Say nothing, instead of being instead of being shut up, it kind of evolved into like, what if like say nothing because when you say something, it's gonna mean that I have to. It's time to go, right? It's time to go, and so that was kind of the idea of that story, and it grew into uh, the say nothing that it is today. Boy, that's so. <laughs> There's so, a yeah, lot, it's not really a lot about of uses anything. for that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know? it's it's about a. I think a yeah, a, it's about a relationship ending, but n- because one of them is moving away, right? And yes. so uh, and so not wanting not wanting the night to end uh, because you know that it'll be the last one. I tell you, it, it really is beautiful, and uh, I could see why people just love and can't get enough of what you're doing, my friend, because it's. Um, it's quite special. What you do has a lot of heart and soul to it. And, um, you know, it takes a lot of time to be able to, to not only write it, but perform it and connect with people in the way that you do, which I think is extra special. And, um, oh, thank you. You know, tell us about also, are there folks that you would love to collaborate with? Do you have uh, people that you like, gee, it would be oh. wonderful to, perform with this one if I could, or, you know, work with this one and. Oh man. Um, like probably a long well, list, huh? Yeah. And I, I think, I think beggars can't be choosers. Come on. Like, uh, any, sure. hey, anybody, I, um, no, of course the, men- <laughs> the people, the people I mentioned before, um, the Charlie Puths, the Ed Sheerans, not even to work with them. Of course, of course that would just be, oh, whoa. Holy dolly, uh, amazing! But um, I like that holy dolly. Yeah. Holy dolly, it's Australian. You like it? Yeah, we're gonna use that now. Every I'm once bringing in a while. it to the world. I'm bringing it to the world. Holy dolly. <laughs> holy dolly. Um, but yeah, even to just be a fly on the wall, just to see them work, I think would be just a dream. Um, but yeah, so people like Ryan Tedder, Ryan Tedder, who's the the front man of One Republic. Um, just incredible. I'd love to. This isn't to work with somebody. Um, this is the only thing that I'm like, that would be sick. And I'd love to meet uh, slash be on the show of Graham Norton. That would be, I think he's so good at what he does. And he is Isn't he so, a hoot? He is a hoot. Exactly. I'd love and to I meet just, him too. Yes. I'd love to meet let's, him. Yeah. Let's get on that couch. He is right. a hoot. He is a hoot. I wish they sort of, uh, they don't really broadcast it here, but you can only see the mm. clips and, and the clips. Yeah, I, I, think, I yeah. fall into the the Graham Norton rabbit hole more than I would like to admit, and my mum as well. And they will hear it, and I'll be like, "Uh oh, you're in! Get out! Get out quick! <laughs> before before it's too late!" Before and now you're, you're a lovely on the Jim Masters show too, so you can add that's that to right. your repertoire of things to do and enjoy, my friend. Yeah, but he is a, he is a hoot, isn't he? Gets everybody just, laughing, which um, gets right. everybody on the couch, and some of the things that they say, and then the audience, and I just. We don't see our audience, but I consider the viewers that are commenting, that are watching live, and that will be watching mm. this later. They're sort of like our studio audience, so they're sharing. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot sharing of fun. Sharing the energy. It? Yeah, I don't know why that brand, that name came to my head, but that, that's what that's what happened. But um, but yeah, I just I I'm not um, I'm just here to learn. I'm here to get as good as I can, you know. And so anybody. Oh, Max Martin is a big one. Max Martin is a is one of the most iconic and successful songwriters of all time. Um, and so being able to work with him would be, would be a dream, but, um, but yeah, I, anybody, anybody, I, I would just, I would love to, yes. I'm not picky. He's, <laughs> he's not picky. What are some things that, um, you have coming up that you're all so excited about? We mentioned, we teased a little bit that you will be, you're training, you're going to be heading to uh, beautiful France soon, which is nice. Mm. And, uh, tell us about some other things you're super excited about, uh, coming up for you. Oh man. So yeah. So April 26th to 28th is the world chase tag world championships. 
uh, which is in France, in France. Uh, so if anybody's in that area, you can get tickets at watchistag.com. Not sponsored, not sponsored. Um, but then what else? So yeah, after that, I'm just, I'm training super hard for that. As mentioned, I've just released two albums. And so a lot of my energy right now is going towards those songs, those 26 songs. I would love to uh, make as many music videos as I can for those songs. I'd love to um, get those songs as out there as possible, but it, it really is a, a full-time job. So something that I'm trying to focus more on. Uh, I'm going to be heading back to Australia sometime later this year and hopefully trying to line up a, a show or two while we're there back in Australia. That would be sick. Um but yeah, just uh, oh, I'm going to be moving back to LA in the in the next couple of months, and so our t- our time is going to be about setting up a, a my space there and get just getting back to the grind, which is which is very exciting. I, I love being able to just wake wake up and 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 make stuff, you know. It's Could great. you see yourself writing movie scores and theme songs and things like that too? Yeah, yeah. Like, unfortunately, I see myself doing it all i see myself yeah. going and playing volleyball maybe i'm a little too short for volleyball but i love volleyball so much so there's, do there's, i yeah there's everything yeah. you know yeah. what do you what do you play jim do you play i love volleyball uh tennis and baseball i played baseball in school uh, i love nice. volleyball and swimming especially in the ah, ocean ah lovely swimming so good and cycling anyway. i'm a cyclist ah. i love cycling yeah oh awesome awesome um, yeah, my granddad is a big cyclist. He cycles cycles across oh, countries. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, really? Have you yeah. ever thought of doing, you know, those Iron Man competitions and all oh, that too? Training you know, Jim. Training. You know, Jim. I was named after an Iron Man um, by the name of Kai Hurst. He, uh, mum saw him on the TV while she was in the hospital, and she was like, "That's a good name." Um, so, you know, have I thought about doing that professionally? Uh, no, I haven't actually. But I think I'm. I've got a little bit of a problem where I, I. I love everything. And so mm. that sounds like a, oh, oh, oh like what so a to problem. Try to focus but, um, right, yeah, yeah, but focusing in and dialing in is uh, like, if you ask me, could you see yourself being a, getting really into badminton? Yes. Like, like all of the above. And so, um, yes, I would love to do film scores one day. Will I? Let's see where the wind takes me. But um, having such a, being able to develop themes and reuse, that was something I was even thinking about for my music in general, like my own discography, like, Ooh, like, wouldn't it be fun to have connected songs and and reuse melodies and have themes and like a movie does, right? Like a character does. So I thought that was something that I could look into for my, my music, but all of that is a, is a world that I would love to, I've been watching a lot of Hans Zimmer clips recently Uh, because, because we just watched saw June, right? One of the great, as the Americans say. Um, Hans Zimmer, the, one of the great. Yeah, yeah, my favorite composer for sure. And so that whole world is, yeah, very, very, very uh, interesting. Yeah, that's so cool. You know, I mentioned you're a multi-instrumentalist. How many instruments mm-hmm. do you actually play, Kai? Um, well, I play the guitar, I play the piano, I play the drums, though I haven't had a drum kit in quite a while. So, you know, I'm a little, a little scratchy. Uh, and then I can play the uh, bass guitar and the ukulele as well, but once again, just uh, something that I'd like to develop more. Um, and then I can play uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Scar- Star on the violin, but that does not count. That does not count. Um, but yeah, how many <laughs> is that? I do not know. That's quite uh, a few. The, what was the first instrument for you? Uh, guitar. Guitar is guitar, is yeah. definitely the, the, the instrument I'm most comfortable with and uh, and the one I've been playing the longest, for sure. The Did you I master find... the violin? When, are you, that, I took that at 13 years old in school. That was actually the first instrument I took. Ah, it was either you lovely. could take the violin or the clarinet, and I went with the uh-huh. violin. Yeah, you Look, start at the I... beginning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, I... I, I... I'm not even sure if I got past that stage. Look, come on. Uh, I, I said I was twinkle, twinkle, little star. That's I bought good. a violin when I was, when I was, yeah, before I moved to America. So, you know, seven, eight, eight years, nine years ago. Um, but I got it and I went, this doesn't have frets. This isn't, this isn't like a guitar. I thought it had frets. And so I tried to teach myself. I did pretty poorly when I moved here to America. I did uh, get some lessons, but once again, I, j- I never put in the time, but I've been saying to my, to my live stream chat recently, um, I'm thinking the next instrument I pick up is either the uh, saxophone or the cello. 
they're my favorite instruments to listen to. Yeah. And so I would love to be able to play them. Yes. That would be very cool. I, um, I threw this out to uh, a cellist who graduated from Juilliard in New York. And mm -hmm. it's something I always had always said, you know, over the years. And I said, you know, and the cellist was a guest um, on this show and then a, a mm -hmm. TV show that I do in New York. And I said to the cellist, I said, you know, I'm going to just throw this out there. It may seem crazy. It may seem outlandish, but maybe you'll get it. And I said, when I, whenever I hear the cello, whenever, in any piece of music, whether it's with other instruments and in a full orchestra or a band, or I hear it singularly, whenever I hear the cello, for me, it literally stops traffic. It just, ah. it's so warm and mm. so contemplative, almost melancholy. It sort of like sums up what it's all about, Alfie. I mean, it just really I seems love that. To set this tone for me. So, yeah. and it really um, conjures up deep emotion for me too. You think of childhood and holidays and family and just really warm, deep thoughts. So I said to the cellist, I said, you know, I tend to humanize things anyway. I humanize inanimate objects all the time. You know, I can right. take a lamp and, and make a story out of a lamp or a chair somebody sat in. I've always done that, the creative side. I said, but with the cello, I said, to me, if, the ch if our human heart made a sound that mimicked an instrument, for me, it, it would be, be the, the depth, the melancholy, the warmth, the heart-centric. Oh feeling and sound and tonality of that cello. And that cellist said, that makes total sense. I understand fully what you're saying. He said, because the cello in its richness and in its sound and the, the tones and all of it is the instrument that is one of the instruments that's the closest in sound to the human voice. Oh. And that's why you're humanizing it and why you feel it to the depth that you do. Does that uh, make sense to you, Kai? Yeah. Jim, can I steal that? Can I steal that? Uh, yes, that makes perfect sense. The, yeah. It feels like if the heart had a, had a voice, it would be a cello. Wow, I love that. I love that. There is um, there is a piece, uh, it's, it's called Porch. It's by Alan Silvestri, and it's from the Avengers Infinity War soundtrack, which is like, what? But... It's just a, I think it's just a cello or it's just a double bass, but um, I can't remember which one it is, but um, but in like, just, it's just that, it's just that. And it's just that playing. And it plays at the end of the movie when Thanos sits down and, and it's in my favorite songs playlist. It is just amazing. And for that song, Say Nothing, um, it has a full orchestra, but I'm an independent artist. I can't afford a full orchestra. So it's a digital <laughs> full orchestra, except I went out of my way to make sure I hired a cello player to record on it because I couldn't do that digitally. It was just, and he really did elevate the song. It was, it was lovely. Can we talk though for a second? When we were talking about instruments, what came to my mind was, was it Mauricio or uh, from the, the harp player from the Tony Orlando concert? Yeah. Oh, we're like, seeing that I mean, you were there. Like if they, I've never been tempted to learn the harp until I, until, until watching that I, I was, I was on my feet. I gave a standing yeah. ovation. That was yeah. incredible. It was absolutely extraordinary. Wasn't he? He's such a humble man too. So yes. humble. But when he got going and it was on him, whoosh, I don't think I've seen the harp played that way. You know what I mean? No, no. Incredible. That wow. really was something it was very, very special. Anybody gets a chance to hear that. You know, there is a there's a beautiful album that came out from a renowned cellist named David Darling. And there's a song on it that's it's sort of haunting, but it's incredibly beautiful. And it's called Children. And it's on the album Cello Blue. And when you just listen to that quietly, it, it really sweeps you up. And and it's, you know, it's a, it's a particular arrangement where there's it sort of repeats itself on many ways, but there's little elements of the way it's played that whenever I hear it, it feels so deep, moving, monumental. Um, again, it sort of summarizes what life's all about. If you get a chance to hear it, it's even, I think it's on YouTube too. 
but I have I've, that. I've just pulled it up. I've just pulled it up. I'm, it's I'm, such I'm, a beautiful. I've got homework. I've got homework. You've got some homework. Yeah. Um, the, the audience is putting a request. They said, grab the guitar, but we don't want to oh. put you to, we don't want to put you to work after training and hey, if you, blowing if, out if your if voice. Jim, and- Jim, it's the Jim Masters show. If you want me to sing, I'll sing. You, I've just spent two hours telling you how much I love performing. So it's up oh, to you, ahead. man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, we never, you know, have our guests do anything they don't want to do, um, <laughs> you know. But that's that would be fabulous uh, if you could. Okay. Yeah, they're asking. They're, they're, the troops are asking. They're like, yeah, tell them grab the guitar. Uh, like they don't hear me enough as it is. Come on, guys. Thank you all. I see you all. Thank you so much. We um, love okay. having you guys here. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think. What should I? Let's see. He just happens to have a guitar right there to the right. <laughs> it's already plugged in and it's, it's ready. Is tell it us tuned? about that. Uh, tell us about that beautiful instrument you got in your hand. Well, thank you. Well, um, well, this is the Martin D. Oh no, you got me on the spot. What is it? Is the D twenty eight? Yes, I got the letter right. Okay, um, <laughs> and this was well, it's it's just gorgeous, and and it's like we. Sorry, I'm getting distracted tuning tuning my guitar. It's kind of cool um, behind the scenes. You get to see him tune his guitar. <laughs> this is uh, very important. Otherwise. Yep. It would sound like crap. Um, Tuning lessons so, with Kai. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you to my tuner. Um, yeah, I had a, I had another guitar, which was a, which was a Maton, and it was Australian brand, and it was just beautiful, and it had moved over here with me. It had been through so much with me. Anyway, we went on one of our road trips, and I tied it to the roof of the car, and I did not tie it well enough, and so we were on the highway. And whoosh, off it goes, my like three thousand dollar guitar that had been with me for seven, eight years or something, and uh, gets run over by a truck and smashes to smithereens. So that sucked. And so yeah. this mart- yeah. this Martin here was our uh, was was my replacement and and has been used in um, all of the tracks of my most recent albums. I'm sorry, but this this is not focused ever since I went to. Uh, Ever since I went to show you guys Snowy, um, yeah, it's been used on all my albums, and and I I write everything on this on this, and uh, yeah, I I love it. It is very good. It's a very good quality guitar. We, you know, we are not uh, well off financially, but if you looked at my equipment, you would think that we were because uh, we really make sure to invest in the in the in the best quality stuff. So um, very so, nice. Yeah. And sometimes it's not even the instrument; it's what you do with it, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, that's exactly right. But I'm just trying to think, what are we in the mood for? I'll sing Say Nothing Again. No, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I was going to say. Um, oh, I like that. All right, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, you like that? Thank we're, you. We're doing, Thank we're you. doing it in a salt cave right now, folks. I love it. We're in a cave. Right. Hello. I do love Hello. reverb. I've always loved reverb. It's, it's that's your sound. And, um... Let's well, well, I've got, see. I've got, I've got an idea if you'd like, because I just played an original and I was thinking about other originals and I've got like, I think, yeah, why not? 50. Yeah. But, um, but I, maybe, maybe we could do a song that, uh, that you guys, you, you guys know. Or, I mean, if, an original is something that, um, some of the folks might not have heard, you know, so it'd be fresh and new. Um, okay. somebody saying young again. Oh wow! Wow. Okay, they are. Uh, they want the mood up. Young again is is quite uh quite. Well, yeah, we're gonna take en- them energetic. from the cello now to <laughs> now to go. Pick up your heels and let's go, and folks. There yeah, we go. Yeah. Uh, let's see if my let's see if my voice can take it, everybody. Um, this is Young again. I hope that you guys enjoy. Okay, let's see. Is my <laughs> guitar too loud? Nah, I wouldn't say so. Hope you guys enjoy it. Rain still falls on a sunny afternoon. Life keeps moving if I sleep till noon. Uh, Host, but tells me, hurry, you've no time to lose. So let's go. There's no map and there's no book to read. Uh, I write the route that's taken and it feels so free. We're all living on borrowed time Eyes wide open as we take this ride 
Jim, thank you. Yeah, uh, I left out. I left out the bridge. So if anybody wants to go listen to the full song, the that music is. video, I jump out of a plane for the music vi- in the music video. So you should go. You should go check it out. That's so cool, right? What was that yeah. experience like? Uh, it was sick. Like I actually, you know what we were just doing. So for my speakeasy members that are in the chat, we have something called the vault, and the vault is kind of like a a, a collection of um stories and ex- behind the scenes photos and videos of all the big all the big projects of my life and so um we were just doing one about young again and mum was mum was putting putting together the the thing and she was asking me questions and she was like how was it to jump out of a plane and i was like i can't really remember for one but two like it was just it was just fun, but I don't know. It wasn't really scary or, or thrilling, but um, but maybe I'm maybe I'm a little bit of an of an outlier. But it was just a. I was like, if this was cheaper, I would be doing this all the time. <laughs> it was really fun. <laughs> That's yeah. incredible. Is there anything else like that that you know is sort of off the beaten path that you would like to do? I mean, scuba diving or other kinds of things that do take mm. some stamina and some. You know, I tell a story where I. I drove, I was on a TV shoot out in Las Vegas and had some time afterwards and I had the rental car and the TV crew went back to LA and I was flying back to New York the next morning and I took the rental car in August heat and drove alone. It was life changing and it's it's a whole story. People said I should do a a mini movie on it or a book on the experiences that I had, but I drove alone in the summer heat of August through Death Valley Desert Uh in a rental car. Uh, which was really, really something awesome. How about you? Things like that, that jumping out of planes and what else does Kai want to tack? Yeah. I, the question is, I don't know. And that's the funnest part. Um, the, the, I, I love like jumping out of a plane is something that, yeah, like I'd wanted to do, but I feel like I needed an excuse to do it. And so when I thought of it for the music video, I was like, oh yeah, this is great. But, um, that's the trouble, Jim. There's too much to do in this life. There's too much to do, and you're not going to be able to get to it all. But um, I'm just trying to do as much as I can. And so, anything specific that's like that, that's crazy, I don't know. It'd be fun to do like fire twirling to get good at that. Wouldn't that be cool? Um, oh, yeah. I don't. Oh, that's just, like all of it, man. I'm, I'm sorry, it's a boring answer, but no, uh, it's a it's, it's a great answer. No, it's a terrific answer. You know what you are. And I'm sure you've heard it before. And the reason why, again, I can plug into a lot of this with you is because I've always heard it from my father and mother and and family and just other people too, even some people in the industry. Uh, Mm. They've said, you know, Jim, you're, you, uh, you have an old soul. And I've heard that a lot. Yeah. You do too. You do. Don't you? Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it, that means exactly, but I've certainly been 
told it's a lot a lot growing up. I always thought that it was like um maturity, maturity, right? And I was yeah. like, well, when I was a child, yeah, that makes sense, but um I don't know, as we as we as I get older, I still get told that. I'm like, I I'm not sure what the what that means. Well, like Sonia says, yes, far beyond his age. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes, I, I, I understand. Yeah, I think like a lot of the things that I say, um, I've read in books, <laughs> you know, like I'm I'm not coming up with them, right? And so maybe <laughs> maybe as I get older I will I will, but um but the and so, certainly when it comes to um mental health and mental fortitude and, and something that I put a lot of time into um is that and uh and but it's really just research and other people right like that's the that's the beauty of being a human is you don't need to discover everything yourself you exactly can learn from other people right. you can that's and right. so so yeah a lot of that is is from that and yeah having my having my mom have that be a priority from a, from a young age. Yeah, like uh, Debbie says, and she's spot on too. And we thank everybody for the live comments. Don't forget to leave a comment on the YouTube channel as well, whether you're watching live or you see this in the archives. This whole episode and all of our episodes are archived on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. So you can watch and enjoy this whole thing again and all the episodes. Somebody young with a lot of wisdom, old soul, so true. Uh, so very, Thank very you. True. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I was just looking at the chat. Carmina says pole dancing. The answer you know, to the we question were just before. About to pull that one up. We were just about it's, to pull that up. Uh, it's, this is I've amazing. I've not this yet is, done that myself, but. <laughs> Jim, Jim, like we were just pole having it either. <laughs> Aha. Pole dancing, we were we were saying because uh because as mentioned, I live stream twice a week and we we have yeah, some fun chats. And I was I was I was doing my thing and I spoke to my mum's is on the live live streams with me usually. I was like, what's going on in the chat? And she's like, You don't want to know. Anyway. Turns out that um, we've got a fund, a bit of a fund going to get me a pole so we can start pole dancing. But like legit, I'm very excited because it's a, it's a very it's a very difficult sport. It takes a lot of skill, a lot of talent, oh, yeah. and, and and a lot of hard work and a lot of strength. Whoa. So I'm very excited at some point to go and get some pole dancing lessons. So that's that's a bit of an answer to your earlier question. So when you master that, or like you say, master, which I love. Master, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, Jim or James Masters. I love that. Oh, um, I see, I see. I can say I can say Jim Masters if you'd like in my American. Well, accent, you know, it's but... very fun. <laughs> Well, uh, Masters is a, is a British name, and I'm the fifth James, and it's really uh -huh. uncanny. I don't know if you get people that ask this of you, if you made up the name Kai Baldwin, but I always get, did you make up the name Jim Masters? That's too smooth for it flows. TV It and flows radio. very nicely. And yeah. I'm like, no, I didn't make that up. That's the family. You know, it's England and Ireland and all of that, and I didn't make that name up at, at all. But when you do master the pole dancing, uh, which pole are you going to do the live stream from, north or south, to debut it? <laughs> you know what? That would make a very cool music video. I'll say that. I'll or a say very that. cold one. <laughs> cool pole, pole, pole dancing in the pole, in one of the poles. Yeah. I, we're, <laughs> we're, we're cooking something. We're you know what? Somehow I think I'm going to be broadcasting live uh, hosting and emceeing this event in the North Pole or South Pole as we see Kai come down. <laughs> yes, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. That's cool stuff. You are awesome. As I said uh, that evening uh, in the VIP area that we were all blessed to be a part of with the, the wonderful dear friend Tony Orlando, mm. another music icon, megastar, and good guy. And uh, you are as well, my friend, truly. It's um, so great you, to have Jim. this opportunity to to chat with you and spend time. Did you want to do one more to sort of take us out at all or totally up to you? Ooh, you've, certainly, yeah. you've certainly sung for your supper and earned your keep on our <laughs> show, which we love and appreciate and our viewers love as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, let me, let me. Uh, and your voice I, I is holding to. up. You said you know you blew your voice out, but it's the adrenaline's I, taken over. Thank you, Jim. I felt a little. I felt a couple little cracks in there, but I I appreciate the kind words. The, the um, cracks yeah. add character. <laughs> That's right. You know what people do say that, and I say yeah. yes if they're on purpose. If they're. <laughs> Which you know is a, is a, debatable if they were earlier, but um, but. 
yeah, I think I think uh, no Kai Baldwin stream is is complete without a little bit of um, a little bit of some some BGs who who got us who got us going. So I'd love to play. I'd love to play something um, by them if if that's all right. Sure. Yeah. Let's let's do it. I've just been doing this one on the piano recently, and so um, please excuse any fat fingers as a, as I play. But um, <laughs> but I'm excited to play it for you all. This is yeah, as mentioned, like. I've been making videos for a long time and we've had successes and we've had droughts, uh, I guess you could say with where the algorithm has not been favoring us. But, um, but just about five, six months ago now, my cover of this here song, how deep is your love really did, uh, kind of changed the trajectory of at least my, my, my life in since then in the short term, long term, we'll see what happens. But, um, I'm really, really excited to play this for you guys. I've got my, I've got my chords pulled up. Um, yeah, this is How Deep Is Your Love. That's perfection, my friend. That is ah, perfection. Thank you, Jim. Really what a song. beautiful. Smooth as silk. Oh, that's, yeah, that's one of the, the BGs, just their sound, their songs that just, mm. they really stand the test of time. They make you feel so good. Yeah. And that, your version of it is really extraordinary. And I had heard it, thank you, you know, many times before and was hoping that would be one that you would uh, choose. <laughs> and the, the viewers are saying the same thing. Uh, it's just a very tender, and warm version that you've uh, arranged it into, interpreted it into, which I think is fantastic. Thank you. It's an you. interesting. Wow. It's a. It's a. 
it's a beautiful way to have done it, you know? Well, thank you. Thank you, Jim. I, I think, I think um, the Gibbs did all the work for me, but, uh, oh, but yeah. I appreciate yeah. it nonetheless. Thank you. Yeah. Have you met Andy at all or? Uh, no, well, no. Uh, like Not I mean, Andy. The, I mean, yeah, Barry. Barry, Barry yeah, yes. Barry. Um, no, you, uh, you channel Andy. <laughs> you're say that's another, that's another yeah. conversation. Let me, let me um, rewind that. You channel Andy. Have you met Barry? <laughs> no, no. I um I since that video has happened, a lot of people have said that they've sent it to him and 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 what have you. But I've not I've not heard anything uh, from him or or anybody that uh, that he's seen it or or certainly hasn't reached out. That would of course uh, be Gibb, a dream. If you are watching. Kai is here on the Jim Master Show. <laughs> uh, imagine, imagine in the waiting room. We <laughs> uh, no. and our next guest. Ah, no. Um, yeah, no, I'd just say thank you. Of course, you know, I, I feel like uh, a little bit of like a, you know, uh, parasite is the wrong word, but like all these people are giving me such praise. I'm like, I didn't do anything. They just, they're, it's all the gives. They've done so much. And I, I'm really, really appreciative that they've been able to, you know, be a part of, of, of my life, you know, well, parallel like that. It's been great. One of the great things sometimes, as you know, in, in life with anything that you do that you love and, and these very demanding, crazy industries that we're in television and film and music and radio and stage and is um, the fact that like we were saying earlier in the top of the show, you're doing something that is you you're doing something that represents who you are and what you're about and what your passions are and what you love about life. And you're sharing it in the various ways that you're doing it in such a beautiful way and touching people and inspiring them and entertaining them and getting to laugh and entertain, but also touch their heart and soul. And th the beauty of that is when people notice it, whether it is the casual fan or the super fan, other people that are in these industries of ours who have been in it maybe longer and have achieved certain levels of success and they notice it as well. And then they'll comment and say, wow, really, I love that. That's great. You're good. You're talented. And that is the beautiful thing. One of the beautiful things about it is it's not, you're not searching for that, but it comes. So it's more pure the way you're doing it. And it's the way I've always done it. The, if you get the compliments and you get the accolades and you get all of that, that is a result of people realizing talent, realizing heart and soul. So it's even more beautiful when it comes without you asking for it, without you having right. to sell yourself, without you saying, what do you think? What do you think? They'll come and they'll say it. And it's it just it's a stamp of approval. But also it is a beautiful thing because uh, it's not something that you um, – required in order to still find the joy in doing it right? right if you do anything for some for somebody anybody's approval then it's you're digging your own you're digging your own grave right like uh it's only a matter of time because because you can't you can't live like that yeah and i, I love there is a quote from the book i've actually got it right here it's called atomic habits by by james clear so master james clear we all we all love james clear um and the book is about, you know, self-improvement and motivation and, and all of that. But um, there's a quote in there that he talks about, which is just amazing. It says, the score takes care of itself. And he says, if you want to win a basketball game, um, do you do that by looking up at the scoreboard and hoping that your score goes up? No, right? You've got you to instead focus on the systems and on the process and on the everyday and about – and about you know the technique of your shot right and that's is the thing that's going to make the scoreboard go up and so in life the scoreboard might be is many different things whether it is commercial success or finances or most importantly of course your mental health and 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 but really any kind of end result um is it's it's i kind of like ignore it right like like not 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 uh not consciously, but it's it's much more important. That it takes care of itself. The score takes care of itself, right? The uh, if you just focus in on on the day to day, on the process, and falling in love with that, 
then um, then all of these other things will will take care of themselves. It's it's truly amazing you said that because it, for a TV news series that I uh, host co-host in New York, um, I interviewed a scientist who drove like 200 miles to come to the East Coast for this interview in the TV studio, wow. and he said that and he wrote a book about it and it was really cool mm. and uh, and i can send you his information but he he he's 88 years old and he just wow. and he's accomplished all of this incredible stuff and he's always learning and learning and learning he learned dentistry at age 60. i mean he's he's just always learning and one thing that he's pointed out was exactly what you just said you can get hung up on the scoreboard Mm -hmm. and wanting to see the high numbers on the scoreboard but the scoreboard right. isn't going to move unless you do what it takes to achieve what is needed to get the numbers on the scoreboard so if you are a right. baseball player he used the analogy of a baseball player mm -hmm. and he designed this whole you know mechanism this this scientific instrument to help baseball players too but it was fascinating because he said that you have to instead of talking about you know, the end of the game, we have to win, 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 win. Right. None of that will happen if you don't focus on the fact that you're standing up at bat and a pitcher is going to throw a ball 100 miles an hour towards you and you need to make contact with that ball in order to get the home run, in order to get on base to then hopefully achieve the win. So it's focusing on what is in front of you now that will then hopefully lead to those results that you want on the scoreboard of life later right and that's right. exactly and what this 88 year old scientist said that you just said at 22 my friend it's fantastic <laughs> and i uh, but as i said i just i just get it from books from from james clear and it's so true and another thing that i just read today in this book is that kind of ties into that is of course with a basketball game game with a baseball game there is one way to win and that is to win right but um in life what is winning in life this there, there's no definition and so i find that a lot of times when people focus in on goals and very specific aspirations and dreams which are very good to have but sometimes i feel like if you focus too much on them you might be limiting yourself a you're going to say oh i'm allowed to be happy when i achieve this goal or that goal and and you're you're delaying yourself happiness right which is which is a whole other thing um but then i find that life is never going to go exactly the way that you plan right and and there's going to be twists and turns and so if you have built up this goal as the only way that you can be fulfilled right then um then i feel like you're closing yourself off to a lot of a lot of happiness and a lot of experiences that otherwise might not have happened. That's something that James talks about in, in the book. And I think it's so true. And so the score is going to go up whether you look at it or not. And so it's better to just fall in love with the process, whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is that you love to do and just try and knuckle down and put your head down and do much, do that as much as you can. Um, and then, yeah, the, the score t takes care of itself. I love it. Well, it certainly sounds, my friend, that that is the approach that you've taken with all of this and you continue to take. And it's leading to these these successes and these things that are happening that are coming your way, which are all, as we talked about earlier, earned and well-deserved. And that I know, as I am with my work, you're very thankful and grateful for you. When they do come, you don't just let them come and go by. You stop, you pause, you reflect, and you're very grateful for them. And uh, I think that's, a, that's an incredible thing. And I wish you nothing but continued success. And we, as I always say, are going to keep the porch light on for you. You can come back at any oh, time. We don't have to, you know, chat as long as this. This was just a really <laughs> good, you know, it and we, do, lovely, have, we do have these kinds of conversations. You know, the guests come on and sometimes they're just, okay, what do I talk about? Just the new CD or the movie? movie or the book and then you're in and out in like six minutes so you got to try to cram everything in i like the viewers to really get a full feel about who the person is that is here what makes them tick what are some of the things about life that motivates them what are their passions what are their dreams hopes and desires so now when people who already 
you know, favor everything you do and love what you do and what you're all about, Kai, they now have a deeper sense and appreciation of you, the artist, behind the scenes, who you are, what you're about. And when they hear the music and when they see you on stage and acting and things of that nature, they will have a deeper connection. And I'm all about connection, even with me, with my audience on radio and TV, is to have that connection. So I think um, that's the kind of way somebody said, I'm bringing back the lost art of conversation. And that's what I like oh, to wow. do. And it was a great, great conversation with you, my friend. And well, you can come you, back Jim. anytime and let's stay in touch. Keep me posted on all the cool things that you are doing. We, uh, we want to hear about it. We want to celebrate it and continue to uh, celebrate all that you're doing to, to entertain and connect with all of us, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for allowing me to babble. I appreciate it. Oh, look, I see someone in the chat right now. He loves to babble. So, yes, that is true. That is true. Um, no, I, I, I <laughs> to really banter and time. babble. <laughs> I'm banter That's and me. you're babble. We're going nice. to go on road, folks. It's a new group, Banter and Babble. Banter and Babble. <laughs> and we just talk about scoreboards for just two and a half whatever. hours. Wasn't that great? That's why I tell people no, nothing is scripted. We don't have pre-prepared questions and all of that. You know, if there were specific things that you wanted me to hit on, hey, Jim, I really want to promote this. or to, We always do that. But when you have a real just free flow conversation, mm. it's something very special, isn't it? Yeah, it was, it was really fun to be here, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate it. That being said, I do have two albums out right now that you reminded me, Jim. Thank you. Because I should promote as an independent artist. Now, after I, everything, I am we very said. bad. <laughs> I'm very bad at promoting my own music. No. And so I should do that more. But uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Uh, the pleasure is all mine. And gang, you can go to kaibaldwin.com. Check out that fantastic website and all of the incredible things he has happening, all the things he's done, all the things he's excited about. Thanks for all the great comments here in the uh, Lovety Hall chat room, folks. Don't forget you can uh, like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like, thumbs up. And also comment. We love when you do that as well. There's kaibaldwin.com. That is the actual uh, website address. Check that out. It's something very special and it's uh, very interactive and you can stay in touch and you can connect with our very special guest. And um, as a matter of fact, let's uh, we might even be able to share that screen and show you what that looks like. This is something really cool. We have the ability to do that. There it is. There he is. Ah, KaiBaldwin.com. There, we there go. you go. <laughs> there you go. And you can go to all the different things. And, uh, of course, there's music. Apple, Spotify, Amazon, Deezer, Tidal, YouTube. He is omnipresent. He is oh, Omnipresent. I like that. That's Jim, can I also them. steal that? Can I steal that as well? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I yeah. appreciate it. I well, appreciate I, it. I we're I stealing that. a lot from each other or we're sharing it, right? What was the yes, other one? Yes, we're sharing. Uh, what was that other? Holy, Holy Dolly. Holy Dolly. Dolly. <laughs> yes. So the H next time somebody. H-O-O-L-E-Y. D-O-O-L-E-Y. Holy Dolly. So the next time I'm driving in my car and somebody cuts me off on the highway, I'm going to replace what I normally would say when they do that with, Holy dolly. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Holy dolly is more like, more yeah. like, like, holy whoa, cow. like, like, holy, holy cow. cow. Yeah, holy crap. Like, like, holy dolly. That's great. Fair income. That's another Australian one, but Ooh, that's a whole that other. Wait. Fair income. Fair income. That's, that's another discussion what, right there. What, what does that um, mean? I love it. I'm a wordsmith. It's a, it's I love a similar this. thing. Like, like, fair income is kind of like unbelievable type ah, kind of vibe. So it can be used like, if you say it questioningly, like, are you telling the truth? Fair income? Like, are you fair income right now? Like, kind of, kind of vibe. But if I something crazy happens and then, and then they jumped out of the plane, fair income, you know, kind of like that. I love that. Yeah. This yeah, is we, cool. Australian is its own language, right? It's got a lot of, a lot of slang. As we yeah, I love it. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best, my friend. Really. Thank you, Jim. Thanks Thank for you all for the having time. us. They Thank you to the Lovety family for, the for joining. Family. And, and I really appreciate your, uh, your, your time. Thank you. As I say, uh, I hope the show met whatever expectations you had, Kai, and that you enjoyed the time with me as much as I absolutely have with you, my friend. I, I certainly did. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You're very, very welcome. You take care and be well. Stay in Thank touch. Thank you. 
I and will. Hope everybody again, has Sterling. a great night. Thank you. All right. You take care, Kai. Thank you. You as well, Jim. See you, everybody. Bye bye. Guy Baldwin coming to us from Atlanta, Georgia. How cool was that? Great conversation. Lots of fun. Lots of viewer interaction from around the world. He also entertained us as well. And uh, we had some deep convo, deep conversation. And that's what we do here at the show. Thanks for all the comments that are coming in live. We really appreciate it. All of the folks who are uh, fans of Kai and all of our viewers and folks that follow me on television and radio here in the States and that marriage of all these fabulous people coming together, celebrating uh, what we're doing here at the Gym Master Show Live Series, which uh, is an entertainment lifestyle celebrity talk show series where we bring back the lost of the conversation with our celebrity friends and guests that stop by and share and share and share. And I love that. If this was your first time watching JMS, the Gym Master Show, come see us again. We welcome you. You're now part of the Gym Master Show Lovety Squad family, as we call it here. And if you enjoyed the episode, well, a little homework for you. Just click like. <laughs> the algorithm loves that. We love it too. Click like on our YouTube channel for this episode and all the ones who enjoy. Share this episode on social media. Leave a comment. Interact with us on the YouTube channel in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, where there are hundreds and hundreds of episodes of our series with guests from Hollywood, Broadway, television, film, music, stage, food, culinary arts, sports, comedy, all around the world. Our guests and our viewers come from all around the world, and we love it. Anybody new, welcome. All of our faithful regulars, our loveties, good to have you here as well. We appreciate all the love and support. And again, we would love for you to uh, have an opportunity to check out Kai's incredible work in his career. You can go to the website, KaiBaldwin.com. Uh, and again, he's, his music is on all of the streaming platforms as well. If you joined us late, no fret, no worry, no sweat, because we archive all the episodes on the YouTube channel so you can see this episode again. Really cool having our buddy and a super talented Kai Baldwin here on the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. Really appreciated the time, the backstories, the behind the scenes. We uh, took him down memory lane a little bit. He was surprised by some of the cool photos we dug up of incredible things that he had an opportunity to be a part of, even going all the way back to when he was on Australia's Got Talent, and we was also on The Voice Kids and so much more. Um, a cool guy, a nice guy, and a super talent, and definitely old school. And um, he loves performing. Probably will have a tour out at some point. Look for that. Go to his website. Catch all those cool, fun videos that he does as well on the internet. You'll love it. And uh, and again, he and I had an opportunity to chat backstage at the Tony Orlando finale concert at Mohegan Sun Arena. And it was really special. And there we are. We were chatting. And that's when we said, hey, let's put it together and we'll have you on as a special guest on the Gym Masters show. And it was really something special. We had a good time that night and an awesome time today with Kai Baldwin and with all of you. So like, comment, subscribe. Come see us again. Thanks for all of the comments. Thanks for everything. We love this. It's just really terrific. Hey, Dave, you subscribe to the channel. That helps us grow. We really appreciate that. And uh, thank you very much. Appreciate that and, and everything here. Come see us again. Welcome home to the Gym Master Show anytime you want. You loved all the photos. Uh, Diane is new to the series. Thank you for being here. We welcome you. We're always getting new folks tuning in and watching and, and sharing what we do here, which is kind of different, kind of unique. And uh, I think that's great. Uh, you're a very gracious host. Thank you very much. I appreciate that kind words and um, and everybody watching that's commenting and everybody that's just quietly watching. We thank you for being here as well. Beautiful words, beautiful comments. And um, this was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I second that. This is fantastic. Uh, nice to see you, Jerry. And nice to see you, Vicky. Welcome. New subscriber as well, Kathleen Walker, one of our faithful loveties here on the Gym Master Show. She's in New York City. Kathleen, talk about baseball. She works for the New York Mets. Yeah, the New York Mets baseball team. And we're going to have to go see you again this summer and root for my team, Kathleen. Hopefully they'll do well this season. You never know with the Mets. Uh, thank you, Gym Masters. Thank you, Rosa. 
appreciate that. And uh, hey, you had a great time. It's so wonderful that you did as well. And everybody watching, uh, we will be back to watch your shows. Thank you very much. And Wendy as well. And and everybody here, we love this. We like to interact with our viewers and uh, acknowledge all of you. As Kai does as well, he appreciates all the you know love and support that he receives, and uh, and that's the way it works. That's the way it should be, right? And I believe in that as well. Uh, gracious host, this interview went very smoothly and natural. That's what we do. Oh, natural. No need to pre-script anything or anything that's you know stuffy, boring, and stodgy. It's fun, interactive, and when we do it live, anything can happen. And um, yeah, and and he did the guitar, he did the piano, he sang, which is great. And thank you for the kind words. We really appreciate this. And Debbie, it's your first time as well. And uh, welcome to the family here at the Gym Masters Show on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Uh, Maureen in Arizona, USA said, uh, Jim, uh, you didn't bring back the lost out of conversation. You invented it. <laughs> The most amazing way. Thank you very much. We appreciate everything you do for us, Lovities. I appreciate that, Maureen in Arizona. And Maureen, I think you did a super chat earlier in that nice Irish green that I love. Thank you, Maureen, for doing that. We want to acknowledge that as well. And Mickey, thank you. This is amazing. Appreciate that. And Wendy, uh, thank you for the excellent interview. Uh, so we could learn more about Kai. And he was very open and authentic, too. And I think that's, a, and I knew he would be. I knew that when we chatted uh, backstage in the VIP area with uh, Tony Orlando's concert. And uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And we'll have him back too. Uh, he's, he's got a home here anytime he wants on the Gym Masters show. Um, you are the best. Thank you very much. I How do we print these comments out so I can put them in a scrapbook? Is there any way I can print these out? <laughs> It'd be cool if we could print them out. I appreciate it all, folks. You guys are the best. Um, Good stuff here. Um, you're in the right business. I went to college for all of this. I studied broadcasting and communications and journalism and TV, radio and theater and all of it, media law. So I've been doing it ever since and uh, love it, love it, love it. All right, gang. Uh, just this is, yeah, we love it. And this is what it's like. This is what we do at the Gym Masters show. So uh, come see us again. And one more time, we sincerely thank our very special guest, our friend Kai Baldwin. You know him, you love him. And if you didn't know him before, now you love him here on the Gym Masters show. Come see us again. You know who we have tomorrow with us? We have Elvis Presley making a return visit. A lot of our guests love the vibe we have here and they want to be back on the show. So Elvis Presley's cousin, Donna Presley, is returning to the Gym Masters show. Yeah tomorrow. That'll be 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're here on the East Coast, so in the New York area, so it is 7 p.m. Eastern for us, and that's 6 p.m. Central, and that is 4 p.m. Pacific. And for the folks in Australia, I believe it's already like tomorrow. But again, archived. Uh, and you know, for all of our viewers watching right now in Europe, where we know it's very, very late, we thank you. Our viewers come from all throughout North America, as well as South America, uh, Europe, we hear from Asia, South Africa, throughout Africa, Australia. We have a lot of viewers in Australia. We love you there. New Zealand. So whatever time zone it is, thanks for uh, watching and, and enjoying. And we really appreciate that. And uh, take a video of the chat. Good idea. We should be doing that, right? <laughs> Who am I talking to? <laughs> anyway, um, it's so great to have you here. You're new to the channel. And uh, this is fun. You guys make me laugh. Hopefully, I make you laugh too. All right. Good stuff. And um, yeah, we're generally on 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, but sometimes we do earlier shows to wrap around my. I work full time in television and radio here in the States. So sometimes they have to wrap it around my schedule if I'm on location on a TV shoot or a, a studio shoot or I'm on the radio or whatever. Uh, so we may do an earlier show. We've done weekend shows with some of our guests who are overseas you know, in Ireland, because they're ahead of us time-wise, so we didn't want to make it too late for them. But um, what you can do is on the YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, click the notification bell. When you click the notification bell, you'll get a notification about uh, an upcoming episode of our show, so you never miss it. Also, we promote the shows on the social media. You can find me at Gym Masters TV on Facebook, 
uh, Instagram, Twitter, which is now X, all at Jim Masters TV. And of course, Kai is on all of the social media as well. And Vicky says, I will definitely be back. As Arnold Schwarzenegger said, I'll be back. Great, great job uh, you did. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. But not everyone is as good as you. Thank you very much. I, uh, you know what I do? I take out some of the old school ways that the legendary uh, announcers and hosts and presenters did. Johnny Carson and all the major legendary uh, presenters and hosts um, did. And the way that they've done it, warm and conversational, which is my personality anyway. And then we mix it with some flair and flavor and we uh, punch it up a little bit. Um, and, and Kai Mitch Graham Norton, who I think is hilarious. I've always, I wouldn't mind meeting him as well. I've always enjoyed his, uh, casual fun style. And I think people enjoy that. You know, we get serious sometimes with deep conversations about life. Uh, today we just had that solar eclipse go right across America. And it was really amazing. It was really something special. And, um, Mm. You, I know we had a lot of people watching from the UK as well. Uh, you're in the Pacific, uh, in Washington. Yes, beautiful area. Great to have you with us as well. So, uh, yeah, check us out on social media. Check us out on the YouTube channel, Your Masters TV, and uh, subscribe. Click that notification bell so you get the alerts from all of that. And you appreciate the old school, uh, a dying art. Well, we're sort of preserving that with a modern... Uh, twists and modern vibe of today, which is so important. So we sort of mix the two worlds together, the then and the now together here on JMS for uh, for all of us. And uh, you're a natural. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, means the world. All right, gang. Eat and relax. Yes, that's we, sh we shall do that. And uh, Donna Presley, uh, cousin of the legend Elvis Presley, tomorrow live. She's excited. She wanted to come back. She's here tomorrow. We can't wait. And uh, scroll back, binge watch some of the other episodes we've had with amazing guests on our YouTube channel. So this is your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time. Till next time, I'm going to keep the porch light on for you as well. You're welcome back here at JMS anytime you want. Spread the word. Tell everybody you know about our show. And to those of you who have uh, been with us, and you are subscribing and liking, sharing, and all that stuff that the algorithm loves. But we appreciate too. We say thank you so very, very much. I thank you for your time this time. Till next time, here on the Gym Masters Show. Our goodbyes are always <laughs> extens extensive, but that's why we don't say goodbye. We say see you later. Be well, everybody. We say uh, love one another. Take care of one another. Come back and see us again here on the Gym Masters Show series. We love having you here and hearing from you. And let us know uh, what you think about our shows and our great guests. And uh, we'll keep that light on for you as well. Take care. Be well. And cheers.